<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I am Ra Zim, and we all going to be working on the SCAR system today. As well as we've got uh, Mira that will be joining us to do some art later on. And I forgot to start up the recording, but we've had a hype train going for a bit. So, woohoo! They missed my, uh, you guys missed me saying a thing that is a lie. So, ha. What was that? Somebody go and post something in chat? A clip, you say? <laughs> I wasn't expecting this insanity to happen at all, Lightning Dragon. By the way, we still have a minute to kick things up a notch if desired. Zim stated that they'd be more than happy to make it a sound clip if it hits level 20. If that's within the desires, just throwing that out there. Bow, bow. I'm also gonna chuckle if something occurs. I'll throw it to you in DMs. Oh no. Hey, you guys get it to at least level 8 and I'll sing. You get me singing. You got 30 seconds. Odd pal, stop abusing your mod powers! <laughs> <laughs> and now... Ow! Nano 8-bit Shadox cheered with 500 eggy bitties. Uh, alas, we have mere seconds to go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Hello, True, true. Hello, Gibcab. Praise the sub. Nano, thank you for that gift sub to Chris Ovos. Here, you guys want something cute. You want something cute. Here. <laughs> There's something cute for y'all. Someone someone should pen the, the clip I made. <laughs> Agreed, but it is cute. Me. <laughs> wee wee. That is also cute. Him. Rygon cute. No. Nah. Rygon is very cute. What? <sighs> yes. Mm hmm. Spectre is also cute. Yes. I'm a puppy. I'm a puppy. As Zim begins maximum deflection. <laughs> nope. Nope. No need. We're good. Everything's fine. This is fine. <laughs> I was really hoping uh, Seda and Taldarius would be here by now, but uh, oh well. You're unpacking two dozen server switches to inventory them, and your back hurts. Cri. Cry. What is cri? No, that is clearly cri. Critical. They're, 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 they're I know dragons would beat like rabbits. What about it's true, I swear. Service. Nano eight bit shadox demands the beans. Brian. <laughs> oh, that was great. I approve of that.
but yep that's the best I can do for you <laughs> Normally you can only play that while uh, I I've got an actual avatar, you know, 3D model nano. But there you go. Hi, Evolios. <laughs> I approve of this. Very no, nice. that's not what that normally does, Nano. This is a one-time do. Th this is a one-time thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is wrong! Okay, we're moving it back. <laughs> no! <laughs> yes! Tosco sticks at the zim butt. Well, at the very least, this, this was uh... a mistake. Where is the icon? I mean... Stop hey, slapping my ass! <laughs> <laughs> Catch that ass. There. There. Fixed. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. There was a part of me that at one point or another contemplated uh, just throwing you the idea of, you know, in the event that you ever have trouble with 3D models, how much work would it be to just have backups of all of the other models, the tail cam, and... Uh, beans, or how would it be, if I recall. <laughs> well, I see that it would be a bit of work. But it yeah. is amusing all the same. So, uh, Nano, yeah, uh, typically that uh, card does not work when I'm only doing the 2D model. It is only for 3D. Sorry. This was done for a joke. Yeah. A joke that had immediate consequences, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Just like the joke of, ah, I will say I'm cute if. <laughs> yeah. There will be so many clips of this. So many. No. So, Alpha, are you yeah. thinking of playing that game with me, or you want to do it a little bit later? Oh, we can do it whenever you want to. Okay. 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 God Anyone else we want to have join us? Tempting, but I'm currently in a process, so unfortunately, probably not. We 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 got some Aww. good clips this stream already. Yeah, uh, that's why I didn't start yeah, streaming. Just... I wanted to wait for Zim's whole thing to finish. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. It's good. I'm glad you're being supported. Zim butt pats. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, yep, that did not take long at all. I mean, it was better than the alternative, uh, uh, <laughs> title I was thinking of. Zim Arse Attack. Uh, only I do one thing as a joke, and... <laughs> Welcome to the internet. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Have a look around. Anything that brain of yours can think of can be found. We've got mountains of content. Some better, some worse. If none of it's of interest to you, you'd be the first. I mean, they did hit the... Did they hit the level later now? No. No. Oh, okay. But I cannot help it. I must sing anyways. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Though the song I was thinking of singing was, uh, I've had enough of you. 
<laughs> All right, I'll go. No. No. Yeah. no. None of this out of context nonsense. I wasn't paying attention to the conversation, so I assume automatically it's about me. Close around the Rugon. You cannot escape. No escape. Yeah, Gib Gab. Yeah. I think if if it's okay, Alt, I might do a little bit of deep rock and then we can transfer over to our game. Okay. I'll only do like one or two missions, just enough to kind of get the itch out. Two hours later. <laughs> just five more minutes! You know, I just, I just need to get into the gaming mood. That's fair, <laughs> Nano. That's fair. I guess I could do one other song. Since I did give you guys a very short amount of time. <laughs> now for YouTube to uh, tell me that. Demonetize. Oh no, you YouTube! Every time I look up this song, has in a thing here. Uh, there is help available. Please call the suicide hotline. Oh. Which, to be fair, you know. I'm glad that they have that warning on there, but a million gruesome ways to die is just a song, guys. I know we'll be the best of friends, so there's no need to run. The sooner you get dead, the sooner you can join the fun. No need to fear, for I am here. Now should we use this rusty knife so I haven't got a gun? <laughs> There's a million gruesome ways to die. Oh, why resist when the party's just begun? There's a million gruesome ways to die. No, your death will be second to none. Dynamite is quick, but it makes a lot of mess. And flattened by a cow is just embarrassing at best. But right into a yummy cake, dropped into a bit of space. Burning in a lobster take my dirt a little less. There's a million gruesome ways to die. Oh, why resist when the party's just begun? There's a million gruesome ways to die. Oh, your death will be second to none. We could put you in a cage with a hungry alligator. Wrap you in a volcano with an active crater. What about 10,000 volts of electricity? Or oh, try a death by Shakespeare in a tragic comedy. Trampled by an elephant or turned to goat meat stew. We'll try and fight a dragon on with nothing but a shoe. We could do a mummy's curse. With or turned into a stuffy now. That's something we can do. Absolutely, I'll TF you all. Brilliant. Gruesome ways to die. Oh, why resist when the party's just begun? There's a million gruesome ways to die. Are you sure your death will be second to none? Put you in a blender and frappe! Maybe we can find an angry mob! Turn you on a steak and cook you up like a kebab! Smothered by a pillow in your bed! A gluten overdose from too much bread! 
and then you can join the party because you're dead. Into your death will be second to Mr. Leaper's beckoning you. Sure, your death will be second to no. <laughs> there. Okay, go on starting stream now. <laughs> okay. Yay! It was beautiful. America's next idol. Is the, is American Idol still a thing? Oh, you know? uh, if it is, it's definitely been toned down. I've not heard anything of it for a while. I think that's just more a matter of... I mean, how often do we really even talk about actual TV anymore? I don't know. All <laughs> I know is that if there's American Idol, it, somebody a singer always fucking wins it. Well, y yes, that... that... That's the whole point of it! <laughs> there are other talents out there, thank you very much. Well, you're, you're thinking, thinking of, of America's America Got Talent. Got talent. <laughs> American Idol is completely about singing. No, it's about looking pretty. I got you there. Enja! Apparently it is still a thing. Why? Thank you, Space. Mm-hmm. Because people like pointing at others and laughing. I know I do. <laughs> what emote came in? Uh... Oh, that's the one that you wanted, Dano? Got the cry emote after making me cry. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> nah, <laughs> the emote. The emote and creator chat's clip was perfect, Nano. <laughs> Rygon cute. Oh, sweet. What's up? Rygon cute. Rygon cute. Oh. I have to turn Zim back up. Oh, ouch. Sorry, you were very loud there for a bit. And now I can barely hear you over my music. Eep. Hoot, hoot. To be fair, Nano, I don't even remember where what all my emotes are, where they are, or anything like that. Oh, hey, I can re-add this. Oh, sweet. There's a Deep Rock Galactic Twitch integration mod. Ah, uh, yes. Ooh. Nano 8-bit Shadox does Prepare a bit for chaos. It can also increase the player lobby count, so we can have more than four players playing. <laughs> Enjoy for, the enhanced load. For the record, uh, Nano, this is the next one. Do that smile. Right, cute. Right, cute. My home. Right, guns. What we call the cute bean. I think I just might have to get this uh, Twitch integration mod downloaded at some point. 
I do it right now, but I have to join a Discord and like talk to people, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> Ugh. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes, of all yes. <laughs> yes. You know, who was the biggest French lady of all time? What? What? Yeah. There, there, there is someone who holds the record for the biggest French lady of all time. Do you know who it was? What? Well, what, what do you think, Zim? Can you take a guess? It's someone you know. I have no idea. All right. Fine. Fine. You, you, you ready for me to, to reveal it? Sure. All right. Oh it's wait, a Statue of the, Liberty. Yeah, I was gonna say the statue. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a sec. The Statue of Liberty was made by France. God damn it. play one more song everyone and then we will get started for today and i yeah. got a nice little surprise for you all later we can play something spooky yeah and then you know i i was thinking an opera singer as well <laughs> how dare you dear guardian sure slither eye we got rag on here why not <laughs> Wait, what does that mean he, and Slitherite asked I if we wanted Rag, a... I guess Rygon is here. Whatever. Slitherite asked if anyone wanted a dad joke. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, I mean, you're my feelings. It'll be just Rygon, so whatever, man. I guess he's here. No one's going to miss him if he's gone. Bat. <laughs> no. Definitely not what I meant. I know, I'm just teasing I know nobody here is quite that callous.
In fact, I think nobody in our group is quite nearly that callous. We've got a pretty good group here. Oh no, I can absolutely be that callous, but I also understand the importance of others. Then I think that means you're not that callous, Warstein. You just defeated your own point. Sly the right cheered with 100 eggy bitties. When does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. Oh, that now one. I've heard that one. Shadox wants you or Alexa to tell a joke. Shit, I need to go get some water. You want start. a joke from Alexa? Okay. Computer, tell us a joke. Did you know Chewbacca played pro sports? He even won Wookiee of the Year. Did you know Chewbacca played sports? He even won Wookiee of the Year. Oh my god, kill me. <laughs> what do you expect? I expect some dignity from you all. Oh, We're oh, furries! Ah! That's a horribly misjudged order right there. Expecting dignity from furries. Wow. I am offended, good snack. Offended. You should be. Oh no. Boop, the Sly the right cheered with 100 eggy bitties. <laughs> Rick Astley will let you take any movie in his What's Pixar happening? collection except for one. He will never give you up. That's oh what. Oh my god. <laughs> a dart has joined. Hello. Hey. I am alive. Hooray. Fantastic news. <laughs> I have been waiting for you and Taldarius, but I don't know where Taldarius is. But hey, since Taldarius isn't here, I'm not late. That's not how it works! Nano eight big shadows wasn't expecting that. We're still waiting for someone to begin, so thus it therefore I am not late. I've already begun. We've been going for a while. No Yeah, wild. you missed You miss Zim admitting. I got a little things. bit of water. I'm gonna turn it on open the window. Exactly, Volus. So you're I'm only late if you're the last here. person to arrive, and thus Taldarius is the one that's late. Well, you did miss something quite monumental, so I'm still going to call you late. Nah, is, you it, also... It, 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 is it the gold-plated Abbey statue that <laughs> oh, just does no. certified cutie? It does involve cute, but I would advise you to check the clips chats. I'm sure someone's yes. posted it by now. Don't worry, I have. Alrighty, everyone started? Ready? Hello? 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 Alright, let's transfer on to the main event. My oh, man shows up. Hello is there, Rex. Rex. Strider. Hello, Rex. It's a very good boy. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. It's not off work. How are you doing, too? Oh, jeez. Anyway, Zim is cute. How's, how's the uh, scar? 
Oh, just working on it. It's it's healing, but the doctors say that they hope that it won't disfigure my face too bad. Nice. <laughs> of course, Rygon would be the first one to make a joke like that. No, of course. I'd be surprised, honestly, if I didn't. <laughs> oh, I'm getting too predictable now. Time to uh, up the unpredictableness. Affirmative. Good luck. Rex, I have something very important to ask you. Uh, what's that? Will you marry me? How did I know you were going to say that? I knew that was coming too, but I don't think Rex did. Well, Rex is the only one I haven't asked. I was waiting for, oh yes, I was waiting for like chaos, outlandish, or just like, it's like, okay. That's funny. So what part of Scar is being worked on right now? Right now I'm working on the character advancement rules. Oh, that's going to be a good one. So, like, evolving in Pokemon, Digivolution and Digimon? Uh, that will be covered in this section, yes. However, um, the main thing that it's uh, that I'm going over with this is... Uh, right now are the XP costs for things and other ways to purchase higher stats. Oh. Yeah, that's the trickiest part to get about it, is how much XP things cost and make it universal. Yeah. And Nano, no, I haven't gotten on the type chart again yet. That's another one that I was kind of waiting for Taldarius for. Ooh. Uh, is having Halloween season stuff. Hey, Corey. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, they are. I think uh, Monster Hunter Monster Hunter has some stuff going to follow in. The Monster Hunter's doing some Halloween? Nice. Basically, Ooh, everybody be does. Fun. That, speaking Just, of which, has there, been a, has there been a Halloween in any of the tabletop sessions yet? Like a Halloween celebrated? I'm pretty sure the Digimon game is a Halloween session. <laughs> yeah, so. it kind of is. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Did you, you not see what... in the last one? <laughs> I, I know you've listened to the second episode at least twice, and you're telling me that's not a oh, ha Halloween yeah. one? I am not at all telling you that. I'm just saying I'm agreeing. It literally had, like, freaking horror all over that. Freaking... <laughs> Especially with the... Uh... Near the two hour mark, or so you had like hands coming out of fog and all sorts of stuff. It's really? Yeah. Oh, hey, we had a couple of things just happen. Zola, thank you for the very odd bit number of a thousand and nine. That's, that's oh. a very weird number, but thank you so much. And I do things. Thank you so much for the 300 biddies. You're dropping by to do some property damage? Please, no, I can't get forward to get kicked out of a second, please. Oh. I think they're, just... try, they're trying to tell you to play some paw pretty damage. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. I got that fun. Oh. Hey, and thank you so much for the tier one uh, sub, Wostein. Much appreciated. Oh. Wostein coming in with them spooky hoops. Oh, yes. And as for your remark, Rex Strider, yes, I have every intention of throwing a little bit of silliness for the upcoming tabletop with uh, the Halloween around the corner. <laughs> awesome. Let's be some solstice celebrations of some sort. I like when it's like Halloween, but it's not quite Halloween. Like it's in, in the world. All the other things like Day of the Dead or Day of the Darkening or Day of the, you know, whatever you want to call it, cheap thing to symbolize the Day of Death. So, pretty interesting. <laughs> But like, like Zim pointed out, I think, uh, yeah, I think they're good on in the digital world with how how dark it is. Walk outside, it's Halloween. 
to die. <laughs> Oh, I gotta trick or treat myself to some horrific goodies. Oh, okay, let's do it. Oh, Susan, is this acceptable? Uh. Oh, sorry, the icon. Yeah, I was bringing it up. Oh, okay. that looks great. That is great. It does. Also, guys. Go ahead. Uh, say that you are still just Snoot. Should I, should I change to something other than Snoot? Probably. <laughs> okay. It looks weird lined up with everybody else. And what it were makes you gonna say? It huh? makes sense that I'm in the corner. <laughs> well, if our icons were just a hair oh, shorter... Oh, shit! Give Why me a second, I do things. Let me fix that for you. And what were you saying, uh, Brygon? Um, I completely forgot. Oh, I was saying oh. the, the station's so spooky. They got ghosts and spooky candles and, and everything. Oh, jeez. There's pumpkins all over the level, and they have swarmers in them. <laughs> Do any of them have any treats? Denied. Treats denied. It should work now, I do things. I apologize that they weren't working before. I always forget to refresh the mix it up. Or is mix it up even on right now? It is not, that's why. Rowy row. It's a warning. Hello. 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 Greetings and welcome. The bits will be helpful, most definitely, Zola. They're gonna come a little late, but they'll they'll be helpful. Oh, have you already did the AOE ones already? No, we haven't gone over that yet. Uh that is, that's another thing that I was kind of wanting Caldarius here for, but I guess uh, if we've got NJ oh, here, I can probably, uh, I know NJ, you're here in call, but you are muted and I haven't heard from you in a while. Ooh, I worry he has fallen asleep. Uh, understand. All up the goes. Pal, thank you so much for the bitties. Thank you for so much for the 470 bitties, old pal. Mm -hmm. mind, mind, I, had mind. Some, I had some space, so I was like, I will help the work on. Oh, thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. Literally, at this point, every mm -hmm. little bit helps. Mm -hmm. I got debts to pay and gas to try to fill up on. And foods to eat. And we have a hype train right now, too. Holy shit. Yeah. Nice. Congrats. Tonight. Alright, mods, I need a shout out for Rygon, the one with the link, please. Exclamation point SO. You guys need to get over there and support the Rygon. Yeah. I'll tell you all what, if we manage to do well on the hype train, I'll go ahead and I'll get that Twitch integration going for this game right away and we can all enjoy messing with me. <laughs> what game you playing? Deep Rock Galactic. It has a Twitch integration, so people oh, can like summon okay. swarms and stuff. Yeah. Oh shit! Where's that more guy I saw? At the get on there with you sometime. Yeah, I very much would enjoy your company. Feel free. No, I saw some more. Guy. Um, going back to the Spar Engine though, uh, I don't know that much longer I could be talking while I'm driving. 
but um, I have an idea for the AOE. Uh, AO uh, let's wait for you to get home and go over that then. Yep. Here I do things. Let me go ahead and do that for you. Apparently the refresh uh, is the Rex. I have a few things I need to do when I get home, <laughs> but I'll try to jump back in. Yeah, just let us know whenever you're ready to do something. I'm feeling very eepy. <laughs> I thought you were here to help. I am. Oh. I tried to jump in. Oh, no, I was talking to Wernie on that, it. Rex. Oh. Oh. Rex, I, you're I a good boy. Can, I can help a little. But I'm also Thanks. feeling the big EP. I think you zoom for the 69 BDs. I think that's a I think that's hitting to something though. I had like pie. I had three meetings today. My brain is fried. Oh no. Oh, you know and I worked man. for almost almost ten hours. Oh no. Let's see, Twitch, Twitch channel, yeah. bitch cheer. Oh, here we go. can take advantage of the situation. Oh no, I'm getting, I'm gonna get shot. Do, 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 do. No, no, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Oh. Nano, holy shit! How many? Thank you for the 10 <laughs> gift subs. I'm trying to do things. You guys are being too nice to me. Oh, oh no. It's, it's nice, nice to that Ruka. Oh, no, it's going, it's oh. going to do all descriptions all in order. Oh, shit. I thought I fixed that. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that noise for a while. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nato, for the gift subs. I really do appreciate it. Enjoy your ad free experiences, everyone. Let's see, uh, exit that. I command pure chaos. This. Kinda. Worstein underscore oil has turned Wernimal into execute. They can only talk like that execute. Pokemon for two minutes. Um, there we go. So for those, uh, please don't play them right now. Uh, I'm not feeding audio through Discord because somebody's uh, got an issue right now. So I want to respect that and help try to keep the extra stuff down. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. But we can let this one go through on Wernie. I'll let you know when Execute. it's on Wernie. Or I'll eat you first, one of the two. Oh. Zim, Zim, if you're, if you're talking about me, I mean, I don't mind if you have your things planned. No, it's not you. No, uh, I, I, I came in with a piercing headache today, like you know, literally oh. just like ow, ow, ow. So oh, I think like, oh, no. and, and I and I hydrated with a bunch of electrolytes and a little bit of sugar. No, you want to what execute them? Oh my god! <laughs> I mean. Oh, no, I it... didn't... Oh. If you want me to turn him on, I, I'm more than happy to. I just uh, turned off the feed through for your headache. Oh, the f the feed's fine. I the cards the car or sorry, the feed's okay as it is. Cards um, cards are fine. Okay, I'll turn it back in. Feel free to play the cards then. Oh my god, I have well, so many extra like spaces here. Oh. Is where's the hype train? Did it already finish? I guess so. I think so. I didn't even notice. I was so busy. Oh, that's where I need to go. Yeah, the car's coming back. It's like, so you to hit my old dusty trail before I get turned into something. Plus, I have a, uh, my bags are coming up. I gotta start getting ready to get food and everything for, uh, Bianca for her cheat day. But, um, I'll be back on here when I get home. I'll take an hour and, uh, handle stuff, and I'll jump back on here as well. Yeah, right, sounds good. Like Saturday. Sounds good. <laughs> yep, yep. We look forward to having you. Yeah. See everybody. I'll catch you all later. I love you, Zim. I'll be back. Bye. Love you too. Bye. Bye. So, 
for a science question. All right, hit if, me. If if the warney got turned into an execute, would the different eggs have like slightly different personality attributes? Like, are are they just like one hive mind warney, or do we have like the um all the condensed like bomb moth warney, art art arty warney, like? We are the it, it, We will assimilate. No, no. I, I choose to believe that they are each individuals. Um, the one that's got the uh, broken shell, that is the bomb one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just turned them into execute because they said their brain was fried. Fair. And fried egg is good. Pat, pat. Nibble. Row, row. Is there any point to breaking these stupid pumpkins? Unknown. Probably achievements or something. <laughs> well, I mean, like, reward. I don't know. I got a swarm and rock box hitting me at the same time. Oof. I do want to. I do want to emphasize, everybody. Thank you so much for your support of the of me and my channel. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, I don't think I get to say that nearly often enough, and you all really do deserve that recognition. Spreading all the rock box over. Oh, the music died, so that means it's done, right? Oh, that sounded big. Probably not. <laughs> Him. Me. Jeez, this rock box swarm is gonna reduce everything. Yeah, what do you what do y'all think? Should we get some Twitch integration in for this game sometime later today? <laughs> um, by the way, I did a little bit of renaming the typical stuff with it, but kind of going with the whole story theming on this but I did add in lengths of time because um, a lot of systems you know utilize general lengths of time like encounters or scenes quests adventures etc etc um, so if you could read through that section uh, Everybody, or I, I guess I could read it off, and you guys let me know what you think. Uh, where is that section under? Uh, general rules up in chapter one. Oh, I'll give it a read over. 
I'll go ahead and read it off, too, for people here on listening and stuff. There are many varieties um, of increments of time that are utilized within this system. It is very important to know and standardize them, so you know the length of time that we are referring to. While all of these terms can have differing actual lengths of proper time to them, they do have important beginnings and endings that are important for you to know. Uh, we'll, read, we'll change that to crucial for you to know. Some effects may last for the length of a story or an encounter, or there are other rules that refer to these lengths of time, such as extra experience being rewarded at the end of a story. Whether you refer to them as missions, adventures, quests, or so on, you'll find a few sections in this manuscript referring to a story. Those terms are all lumped on in under this umbrella term. So, what are they? The story term is used to describe a story beat, whether it is a simple adventure into a dungeon or wandering around town. The length of a story is determined by the storyteller, but it generally begins when a quest is picked up or when the party arrives in town or something along those lines. A story will typically end once the party has moved on from the area or turned in the quest or mission. Chapters in Scar refer to the parts of a story. They may also be called a scene or section, but they refer to a specific scene in a story. For example, the party picks up a quest to retrieve an item from a three-floor dungeon. The first chapter of that story would be the part where you pick up the actual quest and journey to the beginning of the dungeon. Then each floor of the dungeon could be its own chapter, depending on your storyteller. Uh, I'll have to look into that, dear. Um, give me a moment. Uh, a third length of time to be noted are paragraphs. Though outside our th of our theming around stories, many might know them as encounters. These describe small situations such as a combat encounter or a trapped room or puzzle. In general, every room is considered its own paragraph. Basically, there might be some effects like, uh, in particular, those moves that uh, increase stats. They'll probably only last for uh, an encounter, or paragraph as we're going to call them. A paragraph, huh? Interesting. Well, again, the system is, you know, stories and creatures, so... Kind of going with the story theme, you know, you got your story, you got your chapters to the story, and then you got paragraphs. It's a dumb little gimmick thing, but it's part of the theme I'm going, I, I came up with there. Well, that's why I'm also asking people what they think. I can do away with that if needed, if it's better. And dum 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 dum. Also, Mirai is ready to come join. Mirai! Sweet. There's so much things to dig. <laughs> dig, dig. Okay, so smashing the pumpkins does give me a chance to spawn a loot bug. All right, I guess that's worth it. Loot bug. Loot bag. (laughs) 
And there's the Mirai. Hello, Mirai. Greetings and hello. Hello, Mirai. You are looking Mirai fantastic can... today. Look at that, Mirai. How are you, Mirai? <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Hex! Hex, I got room for you to come join, too. Just saying. I am all for having two artists on stream. <laughs> but I'll be making three. I don't have space Star for that. Skin says, <laughs> Hello, y'all. Long time no see. Today we have more nice art to what show. No wearing art, though. Being sick. What about a really uh, average beatboxer? Well, that's already here on stream. Yeah, I'm glad you're feeling better, uh, Mirai. It's really good to have you back. Also, Hex, I am sending you guest star invite. Um... Star Wolf Skin says, I'm feeling great. Still getting my drawing speed back, though. But tonight I'll do some catching up. Yeah, oh, don't I, I, strain yourself. Yeah. That's the important thing. I don't think we're going to do commissions tonight. Um... I think we're just going to keep it simpler, let you catch up on some stuff, Mirai. Yeah, do what is fun. Exactly, dear. Yes, pet the Mirai. Do all of the petting of the Mirai. Pat, pat the Mirai. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff down there. Well, we might do a uh, commission after uh, the Asher Ref. We'll see. But right now, we, we got the Asher Ref here, Mirai. We can call it good for that if that's all that happens tonight. <laughs> that's. I'll be honest, that sounded a little evil. <laughs> Look at that cutie. I will fully admit Asher is cute. 100%. Good, good. Oh, Seda deafened. Oh. I was sitting here like, Seda? What, 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 where, where is, uh, input? But the Seda is deafened. Gasp. Well, I guess since Mirai's working on him. Oh, God! Oh! The Duffing's cheered with 258 gbitties. Asher cute. Zim also cute. Thanks for the bitties. You know, the dwarves raise a good point. They say rocking is more legal than stoning, in which case, yes, I, I do fully agree with that. <laughs> oh, 
your stuff down there. There. I, I, I have switched to the Asher. Go, be honest, Zim. You want, you've been wanting to do that the whole time. Well, I can't help it that I just really enjoy Asher, okay? Whatever, you adorable thing, you. Just you wait. I, I'm going to make you a super friend. There is no hope for you, Spectre. You shall be friend. And, and you will get lots of uh, hugs and pie and whatever else I can come up with. Yeah. He's just like, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, why is there so much more cut here? No! You stupid robot, that's the wrong one! <laughs> Um, lots of little adjustments, tweaks, and it's all of the sort. You know, I finally have something I think I can I can kind of relate my life to right now. Is that Bosco? Uh, no, it's the the book series, a series of unfortunate events. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's so true, though. Back pat. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that feeling, though. <laughs> At least I don't have some guy trying to come in and steal my shit, though. And then nobody fucking believes me. Ah, okay, there we go. That's a bit that makes it un less believable. Yeah, by Lemony Snicket I do things. You're absolutely right. You know, I tried to watch the Netflix show of that, and I I gave up. That show, that series as a whole, is so freaking depressing. It fucking really is. <laughs> I, I honestly have to take it in, like, small doses. I, I kept... Wa uh, we're talking about uh, a series of unfortunate events... Um, I, I kept watching it and watching it and watching it and hoping and praying that maybe, just maybe, it would pick up. There would be some light at the end of the tunnel. And eventually I just got to the point where I couldn't take the depression anymore. So I looked up the ending and I'm like, nope, it doesn't. Even at the very end of the whole series, it still doesn't have that uh, happy ending. Like, what the fuck? What do you mean? It's all happy fun times. Oops, all I'm, depression. I, I know it has a good snack. <laughs> I'm gonna pet the snake. Yeah, pet the snacks. You know what is the snack, friendliest snack, snack. snake? Like a fish now? It's a uh, corn snakes, actually. Yeah, corn snakes are good. They are apparently um, very easy to manage, and they love being handled. Good noodles. Oh, right. I 
I'm done for now. Human <laughs> pets, pets the snack. Snack. What are you do? What are you doing? Human. It's called affection. Snack. Disgusting. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Uh, I do things. We, uh... Let me make this bigger. So this is what we've got for the type chart so far. Uh, we haven't really worked on resistances yet. But that's something that I'm waiting for Taldarius and... Uh... I'm waiting for Taldarius and Seda to both be available to really go through again. And well, Seda is currently muted and deafened and Taldarius is in here. So we'll wait on working on that. I mean, I'm here, but I just sort of enjoy being here. Oh, there you are. I've tried talking to you a few it's times. It's an ninja. And... Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, I tried talking to you a few times and you weren't responding, so I assumed you were gone. Sorry. present. Woo. Admittedly, I had forgotten to put my headphones back on, but then, but then, uh. but then a while ago I did. Ah. And then I thought I should say something. Say something. That'll show him. Pet, pet the right gun. <laughs> what did I do? Pet, pet the right gun. <laughs> you are precious. Simple. No. Dear Guardian, mm. I think Stream Elements is just broken. I don't know what's going on with it right now. Uh, actually, it does... Alright, let me try. Okay, that was quite the freaking delay. Yeah, I think something's broken on their end. I'm not sure why it worked for me, but not you, but, you know. Nice, whoa. Very nice. Well, it is very nice. Why are you saying sorry, dear guardian? You didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, we actually watched something not too not too long ago that um, I think a lot of you would appreciate another watch. Who here remembers the land before time? Oh no. <laughs> What? What do you mean? Oh no! It's a good series, or a good show, good movie. Yeah. Hey there, Rygon. Just thought you should know that Nano 8-Bit Shadox thinks you're cute. 
No. Well, thank you. Rygon is very cute. No, 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 no. Absolutely precious. Have I gotten everything here? Yes. There we go. All of the states of Hoot achieved. For now. All the way until I decide to do more. <laughs> the Hoot name. Yes. What do you call parties that owls hold? <laughs> They're called Hootenannies. <laughs> Thank you for the head pats, I do things. I hello there, Meathy. It's good to see you. And hello, Robert. Mirai cute. Mirai is adorable. Absolutely. Gotta make it. Gotta get there. Gotta go faster. I can't. I'm fat. No, you're short and stout. Different. The only way, the only way that you're gonna, that I'm gonna go faster is downhill. Or if the bugs catch up and give you some nudges away. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. The drop pod, it, it, the ramp is, um... Oh, no! Ow! Leg go crunch. When the ramp is in an awkward position... Made it. Hooray. <laughs> Success. Do do do. Completed. No, no, no. 
I'm debating if I want to do one more or if I want to go join Alt with our game. What do you think, Alt? You That's ready to you. Game? I'm you ready, ready whenever game? you are. If you want to do another thingy, then go ahead. But, but are you, like, ready ready? Yeah, I have the game installed and everything. Alright, let's go ahead and do that then. I can play more Deep Rock later. Alright everyone, we're going to swap games to Lethal Company. Another kind of scavenging game with uh, some spooks. Oh! SB! I was not expecting you to actually pop by. Hello! SB is a fantastic TF artist. <laughs> also, Phasmo is doing their Halloween event. We should all do that at some point. Oh, yes. I can do it Monday. Okay. Yeah, I am installing Lethal Company. I thought I already installed it, but I guess not. Oh, that's a cute, that's a cute, uh, logo thingy for the dev team. But yeah, uh, Snack, it's good to see you, uh... Yeah, Mirai down there in the bottom left is currently working on yeah. Asher's Ref right now. I got scared. <laughs> well, you're going to be playing a horror game. No, That's... somebody just did one of the jump scares. Thank you, I do things with a jump scare. <laughs> Make you make me cry. Yeah, I'm already getting art of uh, Asher beyond, you know, the ref. Kendall's <laughs> like rock and boop. Seriously, me though, me right. I was not planning for Asher to be a main, you know, one of my main characters and stuff that I get a full ref for. And then you went to drew his icon like this and made him way too dang adorable. <laughs> what, did, what did those bells mean? What did those bells mean? Star Wolf Skin says, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> 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 Agreed. Oh. Alright, Lethal Company is ready, y'all. I'm just going to transfer the game over and change the title. Okay. Oh, come on, Google Docs. Please don't pull this on me. Uh, just the screen brightness until the symbol is barely visible. Oh, it's doing nonsense with the... There. I figured out a way to get it to work. <laughs> oh. Are the Tangias out too? Are you fucking kidding me? You have one, you lose electricity once, and all the sound in your thing just decides it doesn't want to play anymore. What the fudge? Not bad. 
Yeah, I do think that they really did a fantastic job with Asher. Like, way too good. <laughs> Everything you touch, Mirai, is just way too awesome. And adorable. And cute. And precious. And... Ah! <laughs> Overload successful. find the event. Nope. Still no sound. Uh, I heard the uh, blue screen tanglia, if that's what you're asking for. You guys can hear the sound. I can't. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw you made a sticker out of it, Slytherite. And, and yeah, dear Guardian, the Martin icons are fantastic. I keep getting people wanting more of those Martin icons. I think I'm going to add them as a uh, option for outside of just the uh, once a year Martin Day charity things. But at the same Duke. time, I kind of like those. You know, kind of that exclusive thing. I might just have to reinstall the whole thing so I can hear it. Because it's it's so stupid. Every so often, I won't be able to hear what actually happens on my stream. So, like, if somebody does, like, a Tangia or something like that, I don't hear it. I'm sorry. Uh, what do you mean I go very crunchy, dear? Does anybody else hear it? I, I'm you're on Discord, so no, I don't hear it. All right, well, at least you guys don't hear it on Discord, but that that is at least one thing that's rolled out. Uh, what about those listening on stream? Any of you hear it? Okay. I think it might be on your end, dear guardian. Sorry to say. <laughs> Nano 8 Bit Shadox says, Hey Asha, for more evilness, try swapping condiments like ketchup. Oh, yes! I, I, I could absolutely do that. Uh, so I'll take the ketchup and the mustard and, and I'll swap them around. Yeah! More evil art. Oh yeah, Mirai, uh, if you didn't know, uh, Aether, uh, I I I've started my uh, evil arc already, uh, so yeah, we're, we're just gonna, we're, we're gonna be, uh, ooh, that's a better idea, Nano, yeah, we'll, we'll swap out the ketchup with, uh, with hot sauce, yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, go Thank ahead you. and uh, that spicy yellow sauce of the Chinese variety with the mustard and the spicy red sauce with the ketchup. Yeah! Star Wolf Skin says, that is way too evil. Oh yeah, the other <laughs> evil things I do is uh, put the milk in before the cereal. And and, uh, and, and um, I, I also uh, seal everybody's left sock. Uh, all, all of their left socks. And uh, I, I also uh, make their pillows warm on both sides. Yeah. Oh, that is evil. Make yellow ketchup and uh, red mustard. I will not stop, Spaz. Ma ha ha ha! Pour milk into the bowl and then pour ice cubes in there. Yeah. Oh, Why can't sweet. I hear it? Yeah, done, Brian. <laughs> I I'm gonna get that evil character's tag faster than Theta. Much faster. Yeah, dear. I, I, I'm a Labramon. Yeah. Look at our Marin. They wiggle the tail. Oh, no, I do things. Uh, pineapple on pizza is good. 
That's not evil. Now mash potatoes on pizza. I would try it. At least once. I was, I was about to say, I might try that. <laughs> Mango on pizza does not sound appetizing at all, though. And, and yes, Kieran, I, 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 I like, uh, that, like, you put some pineapple on pizza with some um, ham or bacon and uh, barbecue sauce is really good. Here's something I can I like my lemon juice. Extra tang for the pizza. Along with the buffalo sauce. <laughs> Asher on his evil arm. Yes. Testing it now. You see, you see Zim and Asher. This is how you wind up with Wostai as the final boss. That's okay. I'll give the I'll give a hug to the uh, Wostai. <laughs> to everyone's and concern, assimilate the Asher. Meanwhile, the Asher seeing the paradise within. No. <laughs> uh, no. There we go. Now I can hear it. There we go. Ooh. I think I fixed it. See, okay. I knew you could do it, Spectre. I knew you could be my friend. That was a long ass test. And it was very philosophical, too. That it is. Alright, Tangia is, right, is back up, everyone. Feel free to have fun with it. There are maybe a couple of other things I need to, to work on, but for right now, I'll just deal with them as they come. Excellent, excellent. Rygon! Welcome to there? streaming, Rygon. Where there is a never-ending list of stuff to work on. You cannot escape the work. The work will be ever-present. <laughs> and when you think that you are done with all of the work, that just means you forgot something. Wish to talk is tea. I ain't using that Game Boy Share for this year. I'm gonna go and use this. My board. turn to save the day. Nano 8 Bit Shadox wants Asher to know you're doing a great job, but being evil, keep doing the wrong thing like taking people's laces, throw their shoes. Ooh, yeah! I, 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 will, I will absolutely take their, their, their shoe laces. Ooh! And then I'll take their shoe laces and turn them into friendship bracelets and, and give them back to them. Wait, no, that's not evil, is it? Oh God, why are you playing with me? It started playing by itself. I think it's a tutorial. Timely reappearance. Oh, it's got music. Awaits. It's got 
at great a great, Guardian great just resubscribed for nine months. You are going to kill me in cuteness. Bahaha! <laughs> Absolutely, I will kill you with that. Yeah. That's but thank you for the resub and the nine months of support. You are now stream baby. <gasps> with Rico's. Hello. <laughs> No, I am not good. I'm evil. Mahaha. <laughs> oh, you're evil. 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 The I'm okay. The scanner looking towards objects of interest. Hmm. Oh, I like that, Merle. I like that. Yeah. I am good at being evil. Mahaha. <laughs> also, I I will be right back. I, I need to go get some more water. And, and then we shall continue the evil arc. Yeah. <laughs> the echo scanner comes attached with components in the left and right compartments of your helmet. Radiation continually emitted from these devices has been shown to increase risks of cancers and other forms of illness. <laughs> the company must disclose this closes info in accordance with the HD Han Health Act. <laughs> I'm gonna get cancer, no. As a contracted worker, you've been loaned one of the company's prestigious autopilot vehicles. This is your home base. Additionally, you have access to the terminal, which is full of uses. Routing to the moon. Perhaps the most important use of the terminal is routing the autopilot. You can fly to any moon, including the autopilot's GPS. However, to transport you to faraway moons, we ask you for some of your company credits in exchange. The cost per moon is determined by our risk and cost benefit analysis department. In general, safer and closer moons are cheap or even free. Hey, I'm reading as fast as I can. <laughs> In general, safer and closer moons are cheap or even free, and the risk analysis team recommends sticking to these safer areas for the entire duration of your contract. Purchasing tools. The terminal gives you access to the company store, where you can purchase items in bulk under 30 pounds. The survival kit is a recommended package of essentials for beginners. Items purchased will arrive on a transport vehicle on the surface of whatever moon you choose to land on. Do not miss the delivery. Man, What is that? Well, they said that I have to go to moons, right? What if we brought the moons to me? <laughs> it's a foolproof plan. Nothing bad will ever happen. Yes, for so me. Warning, impact imminent. What? Warning, impact imminent. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I better thought maybe I should go to the moons after all. <laughs> Pinging wildlife with the echo scanner sends information to our research team. If there is a radio file on record, we will add it to your terminal's bestiary. Returning scrap and selling to the company. While your lengthy contract period uh, may be luxurious, it is not a vacation. You are expected to return materials to the company, and in return we will reward you with company credits. God, it's one of these kind of companies. To sell scrap, route to the company building located on 71 Gordian. When selling scrap to the company, follow procedure exactly. Do not loiter around the counter. Do prepare all your scrap to place on the counter in bulk. Ding the bell until the company answers the door and remain quiet. The conversion rate of scrap to credits will fluctuate over the course of several days, so be sure to check with this information on the term. General and miscellaneous tips for the job. Use the electric coil rib located on the right interior wall of the ship to charge your battery-powered items. In order to prevent a risk of damage, the autopilot ship will not stay on the moon's surface past midnight. Please time your trips carefully with this in consideration. Usually, you will not want to stay past evening. It is useful to keep a crewmate at home to provide intel, watch over the crew to use the ship's advanced radar cams, and access certain remote locked doors. The terminal can broadcast special cords to access secure doors or other equipment remotely. Just type the code. For example, E9. And that's it. That's that's everything. You're gone. Oh, I just turned the lights off. Oh. What is it all? I have returned. 
to continue my evil arc. Yeah. What is it? I have to left alone. I'm trying What's to get this? you in. Give me a second. What's this? You are oh. in deep. Access file Sigurd. What? Thank you for the head pad, Likos. Likos! I want art from you. I I I need art. Okay. This is Mac Dali. Oh, there's like a there's like yeah. a post-it note on the side of the terminal, and it gave me a file. Ooh, where? Access file, Sigurd. All right, Sigurd. Sounds like a plan, Nikos. Miles, or please describe your role in the team dynamic. Oh, oh. Soul survivor. <laughs> I put in Gorbo. Or do you find <laughs> Gorbo? I don't put. In, I just. I just thought up a word, and it was Gorbo. Did it actually work? It worked. Let me continue. Oh, I don't know right. what it does. <laughs> this is when they perish a few moments later as they've entered in the wrong codes. Releasing neurotoxin. <laughs> uh, it Lico's, says waiting for crew. Uh, the Digimon game's been going re really, really well, actually. Um, we actually, it, it might be the... It might actually be the most popular game we've had so far. Oh, here we go, my <laughs> friends. Which is not what I was expecting. Like, I figured we'd have some popularity with Digimon, but I wasn't expecting it to be more popular than the Pokemon ones. But, hey! Means more people get to see Asher. Maximum niche. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> I've sent you an invite. I'll... Oh, can you send it again real quick? What's up? Send it again, please. Ah. There we go. That, that, that's probably true, I do things. And I, I would say that uh, Digimon also has the uh, benefit of being more mature. Uh, yes, Liko. Right. You ready? Uh, Fridays we have a Pokemon What's one, the and then after it is the uh, Digimon one. What does the change suit do? Changes your suit. Oh. It didn't seem yeah, to is do my anything. suit different? Nope. I guess we just oh. get different ones as we play. I'm oh, gonna open so. the door. The door is not opening. It's because we haven't started. Owl was taking the preemptive guess that you might risk puncture of your suit and may need to refresh it. Here's uh, hoping you don't have to. No, we'll be we fine. Need we need supplies. Oh, I didn't buy anything. That's we'll be fine. fine. I, I shall get a lock picker. I, I, I got Ooh. a... Uh... I got a ping on Discord and got really excited, thinking it was Mirai, and then I remembered, oh right, Mirai's here on stream. Yo, you can get a boombox! It was just hoot. Now, the real question, is this the explosive or the acoustic variety? I can climb to the top of the ship. Yeah. Does there fall damage? Let's find out. Mm, at least not for short falls. I weigh zero pounds, finally. Oh, what is that? Hey, oh, that's your that's... delivery. Yeah. Following process complete. <laughs> it makes a little jingle.
Come get your ice cream. <laughs> Quit I, do I don't get anything? Aw. No. Alright, I guess let's go explore Where's... a bit. Where'd you go? There you are. Oh, the lock picker weighs 16 pounds. Now to question whether or not I will regret. Oh, the main entrance is all the way over there. Yeah. Just so you know, we can't be here after midnight because bad things apparently happen. Uh, uh, we won't. We won't be here after midnight. We'll be fine. My curiosity is peaked. Congratulations. You may have an additional soon. Hey! Should we just wait for you then? No, no. Feel free to continue as you wish. You do know where the Rhaegon went. Uh, I went. I'm heading to the main entrance. Uh, Slytherite, yes. They did uh, make a uh, reboot of Season 1. However... Uh... It's shit. Oh, <laughs> Alright, I'm going with the regular voice for this. Um, so yeah, the uh, Digimon Season 1 reboot. I think it would be a far more enjoyable experience if you watch it at like two times speed. <laughs> the main problem with it is the number of awkward pauses on everything it, it's just so painfully slow every almost everything every action is slow motion granted i only made it to episode three i have not watched the whole thing i intend at some point out of morbid curiosity to watch through the whole thing but i'm gonna see if i can grab a flashlight it, it, it's yeah. I will take one as well. Really, Likos? By all reports I've bucks. seen, Adventure Twenty Twenty was awful, but Ghost Game was really, really good and possibly the best. Ah, here we go. Flashlight. Almost 2 p.m. Oh? I better go get that. Where is it? Hey, did you just grab my flashlight? There. No. Oh. <laughs> All right, now we can explore a little bit. We just have like to be out of here in like it. two hours. <laughs> did you see that? I was like pointing at it. Yeah. Flashlight has a battery. Affirmative, probably. Of course. You expect it to be a little mini nuke in there. <laughs> There's like a pro flashlight. <laughs> now with two batteries and capable of self-defense by being swung. <laughs> Baton battery. <laughs> Think here we can steal? Ah. Oh. We have I have radiolations. I have a battery? I think it's like a nuclear thing. Let's bring it back to the ship. That'll give us money.
Was there fall damage? No. Oh, really, Nano? I, I don't know if I like that kind of theme, because I like the ongoing plot of the other seasons. We're like on a moon, so it's like, you know... My hands are full. Here, see if you get in top. Oh, never mind. Use the terminal route the ship to the company building. <laughs> I guess let's see what happens when we try to sell those. What do you drop? It must be in orbit around a mood to route the autopilot. Use the main Adam. lever. Okay, are you in? Let's yeah. close the door. Oh, this is definitely an interesting game of nothing else. Yeah. The laziest employee, employee, most profitable, sustain the most oh, injuries. Oh, how did you sustain injuries? I don't know. I didn't take any damage. I was almost paranoid. Two days left to meet the quota. <laughs> ah, there's the pressure for it. There's the drive to move on to more dangerous planets. <laughs> Going to the company building. Why, why am I pointing? Stop pointing. How do I equip my flashlight? Scroll wheel. Edge scroll wheel does nothing. Ooh, I very nice, Linkos. Very nice. Oh, cool. You actually see it land. Oh, we're at 71 Gordon. This is where we can sell our shit. Yeah. Lace it. That's, the scroll wheel does nothing. <clears throat> uh, do, I, I don't know how to get to it. Uh, press G. I I am. Press one. All I right. did. Uh, Enja, you there? I think I'm bugged. Uh, I'm gonna exit. Still <laughs> here. Yep. Okay. Um, I did want to ask. Uh, I wanted. The others input on this too but i guess since you're here uh what are your thoughts on the xp system and the merits and such uh i know seda has brought up a distaste for the uh merit system itself where you know you're granted merits at the end of each st uh, story arc thing or a little minor quest with no with no way to build them up beforehand effectively having to wait for them i do understand the criticism yeah he, he wants to just he, he doesn't like the idea of red xp and blue xp basically <laughs> two different forms of xp yeah I do understand. Um, we didn't get our. We didn't do anything with that quota. No. What about the thing I was holding? I don't know. But as a storyteller, I figured <laughs> your input would be very valuable on this. Um, should we keep the merits? Uh, and for that matter, should we keep having it where you decide when we get attribute points as well? Or should we just make everything go under experience? I think 
attributes have a larger capacity that they can effectively be the storyteller level ups because it would also be good to make sure a storyteller isn't being stingy with them considering the large amount amount of capacity 10 points in five different stats yeah and and they are a nice little hallmark i am now that you've mentioned it considering the merits because those get expensive quickly and like maybe i should hand more than five at a time if it takes 10 to get one dot in when you've had nothing but like i mean as far yeah. as that goes uh i am going to be specifying that that is entirely up to the storyteller on how many merits you give out um right. But that said, uh, I'm more asking, should we keep with the merits, or should we switch to just letting them use XP? My the tiers lit up. Uh, mm. My concern with going with just letting them use XP is... If they dump all of their, especially with the way the merits are set, the expertises are set up, where you choose what expertise you use, um, you max out one of your merits, and you've got an extra five dice to literally every roll. Yeah, that is the problem. So, unfortunately, I would have to say that I think we'll, we will have to stick to the merit system for a while, because... Other, doing otherwise would make it very abusable, and people sure people can specialize, but consider that if someone did in fact dump all their exp, certainly expertise would have to be more expensive than skills if they were if they did cost experience. But then they'd probably sit and try to argue a lot more about using their expertise. Hey, that Aaron, one expertise for everything. Collecting to scrap. I think we just place it on the floor. Okay. To then the to then the DM might have to like step in and say no. You cannot use that for this. You have to do this. Then they might feel a little upset about uh, I, put, I put literally everything into this. Why can't I use it? Thing? Why can't I just be a guy? Yeah. A potential situation like that. Um, Era, as a storyteller yourself uh, or DM for games, uh, your input on some of this would be useful as well. And of I found course, a big you, bolt. You too, Rygon. Like, what's up? Uh, just uh, general questions about what you guys think about the advancement as it is right now in the Scar system. Um, um, I would need to read that more thoroughly. Well, I can explain to both you and Era. Um, so currently, uh, you've got. Attributes which are advanced by the storyteller, they decide when you, you get another dot in your one of your attributes. Um, then we've got expertises which are based on merits. Uh, you your storyteller hands out merits uh, here and there, and you get to level up your expertises with those. And then oh, you've okay. got experience points which you spend on everything else uh those you get five of them per session and then your storyteller is encouraged to hand out bonus xp for when you complete a mission or stuff like that um okay um i mean i could i could try to take a look at it more in depth a bit later Maybe maybe when I'm um, I'm more able to focus on it. 
Uh, right? I mean, I like the idea of players being given, like, bonus XP. I think players should be rewarded for their efforts. Um, well, what I'm more yeah. specifically asking is about the... By the way, Era, you are welcome to join voice, if, if you're up for it. Um, I think that's everything in here. But what I'm asking is, do we keep the attributes and expertises leveling up as they are, or do we switch them to all being upgraded with uh, XP? I'm leaning towards keeping them separate, where the storyteller has more control. I mean, I'm always for storyteller having more control. I think things can run a lot smoother that way. All right. Because hmm. let's be honest, you try to you try to give players that kind of power, and they're going to do everything in their power in order to maybe not necessarily abuse it, but to utilize it to their significant advantage. I will say not every player will, but there are definitely players that will. Um, the power gamers. Yeah. So why bother with that kind of issue? And let's just cut out that kind of middleman in the first place. All right, I think we're I think we're done with this planet. That was a very short trip. I mean, you know, it's first area. Uh. There are six objects outside the ship, totaling at an approximate value of 346. How do you know? I went to the monitor and typed in scan. Oh. Ooh. How am I used to saying injuries? It doesn't say anything. Yeah. I, I know I... other dot-based systems have an issue... Uh... Do we go to a department? Do we go to the company place? No, because we don't have enough to sell. What are these then? Okay, I guess we go to a different moon then. Well, right now, Ooh. era. Uh, so, with a lot of uh, a, a lot of these dot-based systems, the problem is. You can't really make the higher, the top tier stats too expensive or else they're just completely out of reach. But if you don't make them expensive enough, um, players will just dump everything into them. Because after all, if you can level up five stats and then get yourself a whole bunch of extra dice as opposed to leveling up a on every roll that is uh, as opposed to leveling up a bunch of smaller skills and potentially getting more dice um, for very specific roles it's players it, the the best choice is going with the higher tier um, so that's why we went with a with the attributes being a storyteller gives you those out. Kind of like a mile, it's a milestone system. Um, Why are you dancing? How are you dancing? And then the same goes Number for piece. expertises, is the storyteller determines those. I am thinking about limiting how high you can go with uh, dots in any one skill or expertise based on how many overall attributes you have that seems like a good idea 17 objects it seems like a good I one died. but how do we what what kind of thresholds are we thinking your shipment has arrived alt pal i would think Where is it? right click to scan for it I, I died. There it is. To advance a two to a three, you need it's other two, uh, two other skills that are also a two. To advance a three to a four, you need three other skills that are also a. Th How about that? Something like that. Uh, 
Uh, I kind of like that. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh. Yep. I said Seems I fell in some water oh. and drowned. Which oh. you're about to do right now. I see your body. Yeah, uh, Era, you do bring <laughs> up a good point. It does sound a bit like a skill mountain that is hard to climb. Um, the other op thing. The other option I was thinking is something along the lines of in order to advance a skill to three dots, you need to have, say, 15 dots across attributes. Okay. And then to get to four dots, you need, say, 25 dots in attributes. Yeah. Okay. Rather than the mountain approach. <laughs> Zap. Abby! How'd your stream go? Well, there's, there's 17 objects, so oh. make sure to look around real good. Nice. I don't know, Abby. I discovered, uh, there's bees! Yes. You've got space bees? Space bees. Looks like they're forming a ball. Bad ideas! Oh, wait. Can nope, you grab the hive? I think I was gonna grab the hive and okay. then I, uh... Nope. They be pursue. I am I'm not grabbing that yet. I need a second for that. They're in pursuit. Huh, neat. Well uh so era I would say on that front. For things to spend your XP on in this system, we've got... We, we, like, we've got plenty of things. Um, you've got your skills to spend XP on. You've got specialties you can spend XP on. You can then master your specialties. You've got feats. Uh, oh, there's an entrance right there. You've got abilities. Uh, I'm honestly not concerned about them running out of stuff to spend their XP on. Engage nervousness. I am concerned on? about them leveling up too fast. Or getting uh, too strong. Wolstein found, a, Wolstein found a back entrance. Nope, 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 nope. I saw a silhouette. I heard footsteps. I saw a silhouette. Yeah, sure it wasn't I'm out. me. Star Wolf Skin says, quick intermission. I forgot to ask what to do with Asher's hand pads here. How should they look? I'm out. Nope, 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 nope. Make them little hearts. Oh. Mm, I heard a no. thing. Yep. Uh, yes, I do things. You can also upgrade any abilities you already have. Yeah. Um, that is a great question, Mirai. I often go for the full pad. I, I like full pad. But I don't know. You can just jump up there all the time. What would fit for uh, Asher? Thank you. Well, a, a whole engine is just 25 bucks? <laughs> My flashlight costs as much. <laughs> How do I drop? G. Thank you. <laughs> Look, the tea the kettle tea was kettle more costs than the more. engine. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Ah, 
have Should we met we continue our qu- the exploration or well, have we met our quota i don't know do we have to leave it says we got zero dollars out of 130 so do we, we have gotta... to leave yeah we have to we have to go to that other planet to sell all of our crap okay we're leaving okie dokie thanks i hope things are going swimmingly for you Rygon. hey <laughs> What the fuck? There's like trees clipping through. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, Unit lost. I hate to say it, but I think it might be better if we uh, separate out the calls. Okay. Yeah. That might be. Uh, I love hanging out with you, but... <gasps> We're, we're, we're doing two... Heavy. Yeah, very communication heavy over there. See you. See you guys, sorry. No worries. Alright, are we, we popping out? Are you popping out? Um... Uh. You guys probably better pop out. Alright, let's head okay. over to my server then. Okay. Okay. Uh, pads on the hands. Huh. I would probably influence the pads on the paws as well. Hmm. What do you mean for? I mean, I guess Mirai is here. Let me look up a uh, couple Digimon real fast, Mirai. So it looks like the standard for uh, Digimon is just purely no pads, which we definitely can't go with that. Uh, we'll just go with, uh, more standard-ish Anthropads, Mirai, for the hands. Not full pad, but I trust you on that, uh, you know, pads on the fingertips, uh, and then on the palms. Hey, Merle, you should come join voice. Come help me make decisions. I mean, you are a player in all this, so... Oh, well, all right, Merle. 
Though I do want feedback on the idea for, uh, you know, needing 15 attribute points, which you do start with eight. So that's pretty, uh, it's not that far to go. But 15 for, actually maybe we'll make it 10 attribute points for three dots. Then 25 for four dots and... Or we'll just go with 10, 20, 30. Hmm. 10, 20, 30. I mean, it'll limit you to three dots in each. Uh, it'll apply to expertises as well. But... My, I think it might be a good idea. Let me poke Kerr, see what he thinks. If he's available. Or we just... Uh, Nano, it's actually not a ring. It's a leather strap. Ah, yeah, I like those pads. That is good pad. Yeah, Mirai went over to the leather strap. Yeah, not a ring. Uh, no, we do not have a standard on that era. Uh, definitely is a, so, something that I need to consider putting in. Because I know... Um... I, I know Enja has already given us two, I believe? Yeah, I think we... Yeah, we just got our second... Um, and yep. we've only been running for 11 sessions there. Meanwhile, the Last Hope has been running for like 16 sessions or 15 or 16. And I think we've only gotten one there. If that. Like, stingy. Yeah. I'm thinking we'll just set it to, like, five sessions on average, is what we'll recommend. Alright, sleep well, Merle. Ooh, that's a good idea, Era. Alright, let me go ahead and type that in. I 
I think it's more because Kerr keeps forgetting to give them out to us. Welcome back, Likos. Uh, SCAR stands for Stories and Creatures in Alternate Realities. Also, Slitherite, are you still there? I believe you were the one that asked about the name change. Um, so, we moved away from Rao because uh, we were basically told we're not allowed to continue using it. We could have, but we decided to respect the wishes and change it. It wasn't that we wanted to change it, but, you know. I won't go into more detail on that to protect the person, but, uh, yeah. That, that's kind of what happened there. Scar does sound cool. Ye. Scar is a gun as well? Oh, did not know that. stay on Asher since Asher is being drawn super cute Mira you are drawing him so adorably
Okay, maybe I am enjoying it in era, but that's beside the point. I like Asher. It's all Mirai's fault. Also, I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger for you guys. I need to step away and I forgot to do a medicine thing. Calling out Roz. <laughs> I will be right back, everybody. Uh, I got to go do a medicine thing. Um, but yeah, I'll be right back.
And I am back. Aw, oh, you gotta go to bed soon, Era. Well, that's fair. I look forward to the game tomorrow. Hi, Javi. And yes, Hex, it is looking amazing. Why is the OF ignored? What do you mean? Uh, yeah, please do, Slitherite. Uh, okay, uh, Era. Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle. Oh, the OF? Uh, probably because soft car would not sound as cool as Scar. <laughs> yes, Kieran. I, I definitely need lots more pets. Yes. I mean, you can give me head pats, uh, Kieran. The redeems do work. See? See? I got head pats. Yay. No, Slytherin. That was almost my eye, man. No. So mean. Oh, oh no, Hex. I, I'm on my evil arc. I, I'm not good. Yeah. I'm evil. Or evil. Yes. Hex. 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 You're the good boy. Yeah. Ma ha ha.
Ooh, yeah, Era! That's a great idea. No, even better. I'm gonna put all your clothes into one load. Yeah. And then not dry them. Actually, Era, uh, uh, funny thing is that I usually only do one load for all of my laundry. I mean, at this point, it, it used to be very important to separate out your laundry. But nowadays, they, they've kind of figured out all of the whole bleeding laundry kind of nonsense. You know, the color bleed. Nowadays, it's fine in general. I still recommend that you guys make sure with uh, your clothes before you do it. Because I know only a couple years ago, I had a pair of shorts. Uh, they were kind of basketball shortish things. And they bled. But luckily, I found that out before I put it through the wash. Duke. Duke! Duke, Duke, Duke. <gasps> Look at the Martin! The Martin is getting the pets and the snuggles. It wants to keep snuggling, but the Pignon is too powerful. But it goes right back to snuggling. Look at the cute! Look at the Martin! Behold the cute! Pet the cute! Snuggles are cute. Oh, jeez, Kieran. I've seen that kind of thing before. We had a waster that died on us. It was not fun. You can be my friend, Likos. Oh. Yeah, that sounds like a cat era. That's why you shouldn't get cats. You should just get puppers. They'll always love you. We have gained a vector! Hello, vector! Or maybe we've gained a vector? Poke, poke the vector. Oh, vector, you are muted if you're trying to talk. Oh, heck. I just got back. I had to get some 
water. <laughs> oh. Well, how well, Vector? How well? How was your stream? It was good, but also. Yeah. Also, just eat <laughs> Good night, Era. Yeah, the EPs can be a bad thing. I don't like the EPs. I want to stay up all night playing my game. All the pee poops. <sighs> Not knowing the color theme for this chapter yet is driving me bonkers. Depends on how inspired I am, I do things. But I've actually pulled multiple nights like that recently. I don't like changing meds. I don't like I don't... meds in general. Yeah, I don't know if I could actually do do a stream like long enough like that. I don't know. <laughs> eight like eight hours is hard enough. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it if I if I had some indication that my body was going to pull that nonsense ahead of time. Because mm -hmm. it's always like my body... I have no idea until I get to the point where I normally would go lay down for bed. And then my body is like, nope, you're not sleeping. And it's like, mm -hmm. God damn it, I could have been working on, on this all this time, and yet you made me go lay down for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. And yeah, done, Bride. That, that's kind of how I would do it, is I would only... Uh, I, I, I would only do it. 24 plus hour stream if I had somebody to keep chatting with the uh, chat and stuff and keep doing the stream. Of course, I could pull off the 24 hour stream if I have people in voice and stuff that I'm doing stuff with or whatnot that would keep me occupied. Mm-hmm. Don Brian 46.6, .6, deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, uh... I, I, uh, in general, um... It, it all depends on who I've got with me, because, like, the last time I tried a 24-hour stream, I got to the 20-hour mark, and then all of my friends left to voice, and I was suddenly there by myself. And sure, I had people out there in chat. Our fellowship expands. Praise the sub. Nando! Thank you so much for that gift sub to Dunbrine. Thank you. But I was doing so well. I was full of energy. And then the moment they left voice, it's like, and all my energy's just gone. It just disappears. Oh. 
It, 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 it's... Yeah, my next 24-hour stream attempt, because I do want that. I want that under my belt. I've been streaming for seven years. I want to have that 24-hour stream under my belt. But I am going to need... Uh... <laughs> I, I am going to need people here in voice the entire 24 hours to keep that up. Alright, Meathy, I hope you sleep well. And Nano... <laughs> I am an introvert masquerading as an extrovert. That is how I describe myself. And yes, Chris Ops, you are always welcome in voice. 100%. You are missed. I pulled you out of your shell by getting you in voice... All voice with me and stuff and now you are gone now you've grown up so much and now of doing your own streams and such and left poor me all all in the dust <gasps> Poloined! hello But yeah, um, for me, it's like introverts get uh, energy when they're alone. They lose energy quickly when they're with others. Extroverts get energy when they are uh, when they are with others. For me, it's more akin to I maintain energy when I'm with others. I don't get it, but I don't lose it either. That said, to actually recharge, I need time alone. Which is why I say that I am an introvert masquerading as an extrovert. Hex, you are a cutevert. That's what you are. And a good boy. And a phenomenal artist. And you really need to accept my invite for the guest star so I can put you up on screen. I sent it to you. It's still waiting for you to connect. I'm sure Mirai would welcome you to come in and draw in alongside him. See, look at Mirai. They're making the gesture for you to come by. Yeah, exactly, Nano. Doesn't regenerate energy, just places a temp cap at the bottom. <laughs> it's a buff. Hex, join us. Join us. Join us. Come, do the arts. I mean, Nano's here. I'm I'm sure Nano would love to see the art that you're working on for him, Hex. Either that or you can draw Asher art. I'm definitely not opposed to more Asher art. As I have literally, as I've completely stopped working on the scar system to just watch me where I draw right now. <gasps> Kenku. Kenku.
Look at all these good beans. Alright, um, I don't really want these in the outline. Yeah, but Nano, I kind of want to work on that with, uh, Taldarius and such here. But I do have uh, an Abbey here. I could drag Avi into working on that for me. Or with me. Oh. Yeah, the type matchup tar uh, chart. Oh. Does that intrigue you? I'll definitely have to take a look here. Let me let me actually get that pulled up. Uh Right, I do have it linked from the SCAR system doc. Uh, it is in... Uh, oh crap, where did I put that? Oh, right, under abilities and types. Uh, yes, uh, Kenku, Kerr has been a bit behind. What do you mean, how dare I? What did I do? How did I make Nano cry? How dare Asher be so cute? Well, I I'm I'm just me. I I'm just me. So so that that's uh, how I am. Yeah. What 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 did I do that made Nano cry? Okay, let's go see this. Uh, add a table from Google Seats. Uh, no, we want insert chart from Sheets.
Okay, so I so essentially I do see I'm right now just looking at the type matchups here. Um da -da 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 -da. And just for clarification here, I do see bludgeoning, piercing, slashing for that. Um, that's under basic, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Kind of, I kind of, hmm. I mean, because I'm kind of like wondering if maybe it might be just easier if it was, if it just kind of like, if it's going to be kind of like, yeah, I guess more like gathered like that, basic. I think it was just for consistency. Keep it just like you know, like like piercing, you know, basically to be like piercing, bludgeoning damage. You'll get like that's like normal attacks, um, just to kind of making it a little bit easier to kind of distinguish uh, it. Unless the, unless the offensive capabilities of each is going to be different. Yes, they are going to be different. Uh, right now, Taldarius is suggested instead of having it based on type. Um, He, he's suggesting that each player will pick which of those types that they are um, he suggested that each player decide for their character if they are weak to bludgeoning, resistant to piercing, and then neither way for slashing and so forth I'm mm. still debating on that, but I, mm. I do I want to have them different. I mean, I feel like if it's going to be based on typing, right? I feel like those like bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, they feel like more properties rather than actual types, if you know what I'm saying. Because yeah. Because... When you when you're referring to like kind of a regular like imagine like a regular attack like the actual like physical attack right like a physical attack is going to be a physical attack no matter what it, but you know or like just say like it's going to be typeless right like it's like kind of as it as it stands uh, but kind of it did you know having bludgeoning piercing slashing as its own particular type you know it, it kind of feels a little bit redundant um because i feel like you know like th those are more like kind of properties and i feel like and you can kind of make properties like for example like oh like you know you know bludgeoning may have you know have a different property than piercing or you know or slashing um but they're still going to be doing the same base attack like there are like there are no there's no like fire element to it or you, you know what i mean so i kind of want to i I kind of want to say on that, that might just, you know, just to kind of keep the typing, you know, kind of you know, essentially a little bit consistent just to kind of keep that as like base attacks and then base attacks underneath it will have like those properties. Uh, that's kind of what we're playing around with the idea of is that, um, in addition to whatever typing the ability has. So like say you use flamethrower. Um, it might be, it, it'll be a f fire and then possibly, well, as far as that goes, it could be pure fire, but it could also be say fire slashing if you wanna have some kind of like slashing effect to the fire. Like maybe instead right. of a just a blast of flame, you're kind of the flames are more narrow and more blade like. What does it um, mean? But that would but wouldn't that mean you're stacking two types of attacks? And that actually and, that is something that we do want to include. Dual type uh, abilities. Mm. Um, but I... that said, yeah. 
I am leaning towards just not bothering with them on the type chart. And I just put them in there for now, but yeah, I'll go ahead and remove them. Yeah, uh, that's just, again, just some... my kind of concern because... Okay, yeah, but okay, I see how... Um... Okay, fine, we'll go... This route. And just do this. Control C. Control V. Unmerge. 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 those again merge 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 Alright, now we can just delete these rows. Boom. There we go. So yeah, basic, not going to have any interaction with anything else. Yeah, I can see that. It's like kind of like the like the physical attributes of it. Like, or it's like the, yeah, the, the basic... Yeah, there, nothing's going to be resistant to basic. Nothing's going to be super effective against basic. Um, that's just how it is. Or maybe we'll just make everything immune to basic. <laughs> Um, uh, but anyways, mm -hmm. uh, our kind of concept on all of this, first off, every type is resistant to itself. Um, even mm -hmm. if there is arguments for them being, you know, effective against each other, I wanted to just make it simple and, oh, are you using a nature move against a nature, uh, enemy? It's a resistant. Right. That, that kind of makes sense. Um, unlike, you know, Pokemon where Dragon is super effective against Dragon. <laughs> or early Pokemon where Psychic was super effective against Psychic. Oh, right. We're, we're, we're not having that. Um, the other thing that we've done is each type is super effective against four other types. Okay, gotcha. So essentially, okay. Oh, so essentially, each okay. So each of them is effective to is, is yeah yeah okay. I got gotcha. I see I see I see. So it's a so essentially each element is also have they're also weak against four as well. That's what I'm saying. Yes, they're also weak against four and they're also strong against four. Well, not necessarily that. Um, some of them have more weaknesses than others. Oh like yeah, astral. I, I that. astral is three, and then uh, shadow over here has five weaknesses. Mm -hmm. However, to balance that side of things, what I am thinking is that 
Uh, the resistances, you'll each type will have an equal number of resistances as they do weaknesses. So like Shadow, yeah, it's got five weaknesses, but it's going to have five resistances. That's how I'm thinking to balance it. I am focused more on balance than I am on, you know, necessarily all of it making 100% sense. I still wanted to make some sense, but, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. I do want to ask as well the rarity. Uh, I, I would just say, like, I know this is probably, like, again, in way much further down the line. I guess it's more or less, will each typing be, like, will have a dis the equal distribution of, of moves or in typing? Or is there going to be those moments where, like, um, I guess it's like sometimes like you know dragon is like the least of you know like there's like there's not as many dragons as like fire types or like and, and kind of using pokemon in, in this example but like for example like is astral and shadow are they going to be more are they going to be more common or are they going to be less common um or yeah it's like compared to plan, like, like fire or electricity my plan is equal distribution Um, that said, most of this is going to be dependent on the players. Uh, what I've been focusing on is instead of just giving them a whole bunch of spells or whatnot that we come up with, I want to give the players a list of costs for each, uh, for each element that goes into an ability. Um, each part of an ability, it is up to the players to build what they want to play. Um, so, we are going to come up with some examples, and we will have even distribution on that. Hey, Permafrost, but yeah, that, that's kind of the idea. You can mix mm -hmm. uh, spells around, uh, the abilities around, however you want. Um, our main focus is on giving player, allowing player creativity. They can, we'll have examples, we'll have some basic stuff for those that don't really want to come up with their own abilities. But overall, our focus is more on giving them all of the tools to make the toys they want. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. I hope so. <laughs> right. But yeah, um, so no particular type is going to be more rare than another. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, I see, I see. Uh, Nano, as far as type matchups with moves, um, it's going to be limited to a uh, double effective. So, you know, like in Pokemon, if you use, uh, just for a random example, a fire type move against a steel grass type, that's going to be times four effective. Or in our system, that's considered double effective. Or double super effective. Um, it's still, uh, as far as that goes, um... If you have a move that is that would technically be eight times effective, it is going to be restricted to the uh, double effective. Um, I 
I don't know about Digimon Nano. I would not have said that. If I did say that, uh, I misspoke. Um, in this one, you can have both dual types and dual move types. I guess also when I'm looking at this as well, is this particularly with overall with Scar, or is this, go or essentially is the typing going to be different with other? With, I guess like, in, in kind of like, um, kind of looking into the other section, right? Like with like Digimon and Monster Hunter, um, is the typing going to be different as well, or is this kind of like an overall general? So this type chart is for overall. Um, these types are for... Uh, they are for the SCAR system. Um, eventually, I will be coming up with my own little uh, monster bestiary thing. Um, I already have several that I plan to put in there. Uh, for example... Uh, like, the professor, one of my characters, has several pets. Um... Here, have Asher art while I'm, uh, holding this up. Um... Abby, I'm just gonna use you for yeah. sending stuff and getting links. To oh. make it easier to share on stream. Folder. So we've got this. This. And this. Uh, so these three critters that I'm about to bring up on screen uh, were all pets of the professor. However, they are custom critters that I work to develop. Uh, so they're going to be included in the eventual bestiary for, uh, for the scar system. But that is down the line like that's gonna be its own little supplement most likely anyways um but either way the scar system is gonna have its own typing for people that just don't want to that, that want to deviate and then there's also the fact that if they want to play a game with pokemon digimon and monster hunter and their own fake mon, and whatever else they may want to include, uh, we want to be able to support that. So in the uh, so first off, this is uh, Toby Kale. Uh, he is he would be an electric uh, type. Uh, then you've got uh, did I do that right? I don't think so. Um, so there we go. Uh, this was Blintor. Uh, he was... This is a race of kind of... Uh, they are a race of blind... Like, they don't even have eyes, period. Um, Raptor-like bats. Um, but they use uh, echolocation to paint the a... Uh, their, their surroundings uh, in their minds. Um, but Blintor here uh, would be a Sonic type. Uh, and then you've got Ember the Rolling Flame. Fire type. <laughs> 
Uh, but these are just three examples of critters that I'm already planning to bring into the scar system for the eventual bestiality and it's or bestiary. Um, and that's mostly just for the sake of including it with the system for people. Uh, it's not a priority. It's just, hey, I've already got these. I've already developed them. Why not? You know? Um. But anyways, back to the subject at hand. Um. So, in the... So, we've got our Pokemon supplement. This supplement is going to have both the Pokemon types and their type matchup. And then it will also have a section that details how to convert the Pokemon types to the Scar types. And the main reason for the Scar types is for being able to mix and match franchises. Because why not? Why not let players be able to have their, you know, game of Digimon and Pokemon going around together? You know? That makes sense? Or am I crazy? No, it makes sense. It makes sense. So essentially, essentially each, um, essentially they kind of have their own, like with the typings and everything like that, they have like their own, uh, like matchups and everything like that to you know and the, but essentially the core essentially is is as its own like typing or is it yeah like, essentially has its own type charge no it makes sense it makes sense like for example um rock and ground are lumped into earth um We've got Electric, which, you know, same as Pokemon. Fire, same as Pokemon. Metal is basically Steel, just more generalized. Oh, thank you. Um, Mythic is more generalized than just Dragon, but Dragon type would fall under Mythic. Uh, nature is Grass and Bug. Where's your Bleasel type? Huh? Where's your Bleasel type? Or your dog type. Those are not types. Clearly they are. We have dog types in our game. <sighs> they are not. Anyways. Or I'm interruption aside. Um, mythic. So dragon goes under mythic. Grass and bug type go under nature. Ghost type goes under necrotic. Poison type is the same. Psionic is psychic. Shadow is dark type. Um, Sonic is its own thing in our system, as is Astral. But you can still uh, convert things to other Pokemon to go into those types if you want. Like, Loudred could very easily be put under Sonic type. Um, but you kind of get the gist there. Mm-hmm. Flying goes under wind. Yeah, Whisper's line would definitely be Sonic. Exactly, Purloined. Um, so we'll have a list of how to convert those over to the Scar types. So that way we've got a standard for people wanting to play Digimon and Pokemon together. Or so forth. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that's entirely up to the, uh, players and their storyteller for Loind. Uh, like, we're gonna give some general ideas, but if they want to go off the rails with it, I don't give a damn. It's not like I'm gonna sit there and be like, how dare you make your Zubat... A necrotic type. That's not the conversion you're supposed to go with. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but.
But the use for this mm -hmm. aside, we still need to figure out the resistances. Yeah, I, I'm also I'm also kind of thinking, even hmm, I don't know, maybe it might be pushing it a little bit too hard, but I'm also thinking about like adding a little bit more immune there as well. Oh, this chart this chart is not done at all. Oh yeah, no. Oh yeah, I I I, I oh yeah, for, like for sure, for sure. Um, it's just I'm just kind of like thinking I'm already like looking into like which typing might be good. Uh, and my main, yeah. my biggest goal and uh, objective here is to make it balanced. Um, I, I want to make sure that things are as balanced as we possibly could have it. Which is why, like I said, I made sure that every type has four types that it's super effective against. I'm also, I'm sorry, I'm just like also like looking at, I'm just kind of like, again, looking towards the, but yeah, though, I got, I've been looking at this lineup. It's actually pretty, it's actually really good. I do, I do see that there's also some, um, I do like the Ash, I, I do like some of the, some of the other, other typings. I think that, I think it definitely adds a little bit of more diversity in, like, in a storytelling way as well. Yeah. And it got, we did get rid of a couple of types that probably shouldn't have ever been separated or that were separated and then kind of made obsolete, like in the case of rock type. Because rock type kind of got shafted hard the moment that steel type came out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, like steel type is just, it's it really, it just became... It's like it still type is like don't worry about don't worry about don't worry about him him <laughs> metal so yeah no that that's yeah that's that's kind of fair um and I, I kind of want to say like ground in, in Pokemon I feel like ground and rock kind of shared storytelling wise very similar like attributes and it's like a very vague line that kind of like differentiated between them. So I, I kind of like, so I do like that, you know, earth and metal is kind of like separated. Like essentially like, it's like how, you know, it's a little bit more, it, it's, it's, you know, combining earth, you know, like rock and rock types and ground types to, to be that it, it, it I think it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, Nano. Gen 1 definitely had a lot of rock ground types. It's like, why? Why do you have so many? What's the point in having them separate if you're just going to make them all the same? Uh, make them Pretty. all dual typing of the, those two types. I'm trying to remember, is there, was there a rock, a rock ground type? Um... Oh yeah, pretty much all of them. Now, granted, when oh, it yeah. when, when they first like, like when they first made the like actual Gen One, it was all dual single type. Right. It was just kind of like the single types, and it was just kind of it's essentially I'm just kind of like specifically thinking some Pokemon that are specifically ground rock type like together when they added the second typing. And uh, fairy is kind of mixed in with mythic. Um, as far as fairy goes, it mix it. Some of them fall under light. Some of them fall under mythic. 
Um, so that's kind of... It's up to the players on where they want to go with their particular Pokemon. Or what not, but yeah, that's kind of the plan there. Oh, sorry guys on stream. I guess I should have made this bigger. I didn't realize it was so small. The guy should tell me if the zoom needs to be increased a bit more. Yeah, I'm like looking at like the typing for like rock like rock ground particularly. Like with a with that decision. alone, it's it's not a very popular type. Uh rock like there's only like maybe two. I think so far I see like only like two. Well, maybe three, four, but not, not very much. Rock run. I mean, Get yeah, on! I mean, Thank you very much for that follow. Welcome. What were you saying? No, I was just kind of like just looking at the typings, and again, like most of those typings, like rock ground, like they they share most of the almost similar weaknesses. So it's like, yeah, it's something that. It's just better just to kind of, you know, just put together. Yeah, when coming up with this list, I looked at Pokemon, Digimon, and Monster Hunter. Kind of went over some of uh, all of them, made sure that all of them had a representation somewhere in there. And then also made some of it my, our own. Well, made all of it our own, really, but they all had their primary representation stuff. Yeah, like, Monster Hunter is weird, because, like, Monster Hunter did the same thing with, uh, uh, with Dragon-type, where, like, and yes, there's, there is a Dragon-type in Monster Hunter, um, like, just, like, you have, like, Thunder, Ice, Water, uh, I don't remember. Um, and dragon. Uh, and fire. So there's only like five types, but like, yeah, dragon is like pretty much good at, like, is like overall, like, good for everything, but they're rare. Um, so not a lot of, there's not a lot of, you know, dragon, or well, dragon types in Mazda Hunter. And it's, it's really weird because I, in kind of like, balance in that in that sense is more or less like based on the rarity of items or like the, the rarities of said uh of said monsters well for me the weirdest thing yeah. about it all is the fact that they are they're literally all dragons right they're all <laughs> it's like they are it's all a... wyverns. That's the whole thing of monster hunter is everything <laughs> is a dragon and yet not all of them are dragon what? <laughs> well, I mean, th there are some that aren't dragons. Like, I think, especially in, like, the later Monster Hunters and some of the early ones, they added some, like, they added, um, they did, like, they did, like, add, like, several, like, large mammals. Uh, they also added, uh, also insects as well. But they don't have their own particular typing. Like, and also poison, right? Like, po like it was, like, oh, poison would be a type, right? No, poison's a condition. And that's a to which is totally which is totally separate mechanic, um, with po like with poison and and like getting like stuns like the those are those are paralyzed like they're all separate. It's like so yeah. it's weird. Yeah, like there's also leviathans, fang beasts. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very common in late game. But like the thing is, is like the most of the monsters you encounter is like. You know, it, it's not you don't you don't encounter a lot of dragon, including the smaller, especially also, and, and I, I'm also going to be including the smaller monsters as well because I know like Monster Hunter is like like really into the whole the larger wyverns and all the larger monsters, but 
you know, also the smaller monsters, you know, they 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 deserve a, a bit of representation as well, uh, since they are they are part of the ecosystem, and uh, that's kind of the whole part of the whole you know monster hunter universe. That's true, right? Like that—that that is true. That my big monsters are, you know, big monsters are fun to fight, but you also have to give it give it to the to, to the smaller monsters as well. I mean, the number of times I got wiped by smaller monsters is uh, very embarrassing, but at the same time, I literally uh... when I played Monster Hunter World. Everybody else in my group was off fighting the actual monster. Meanwhile, I'm off uh, off in La La Land like, Ooh, look at this plant. Ooh, look at this plant. Ooh, look at this collectible. Ooh, it, look at this. It's, it's so... <laughs> and that's why I love it. It's so easy to be like, All right, time to like, time to like have this epic fight. Ooh, a mining spot. Oh, let me just grab a quick carve here. A little gathering spot yeah. for some research points. <laughs> There were so many times where the others in my group were off fight actually fighting the monster and I was just sitting there collecting stuff. <laughs> that was all yeah, that's actually really true. It's like you you definitely you just gather all the shinies. You gather so many shinies. And you never and you never sell. Never sell. Oh never my sell. Lord. Always hoard, hoard everything. I don't know why I need these fifteen thousand uh, fireflies, but I will never part with them. <laughs> Pretty much. But yeah, like Monster Hunter is like really, really weird, and that's why I love it so much. <laughs> Yeah, no, you gotta you gotta max it out, max it out to ninety nine, nine hundred and ninety nine, max it. <laughs> you don't you don't need nine hundred and ninety nine, honey. But you but you know you want it. You'll know it in the future. Someday, you'll need nine hundred and ninety nine, honey. Yeah, you, for you, some you, particular reason. You don't need it right now, no. But someday you will, and you'll be laughing as everybody else is looking at you and with envy as you're sitting there. <laughs> Look at me in my horde of honey. So, anyways, back on track. <laughs> right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like that, yeah, and that's what's like, you know, kind of like my question on that because it's because, especially like with Digimon and like Moss Hunter modules, it's I'm kind of wondering, like, because like their their system's a little bit different, um, especially. Oh my god, kind of... Don Brian, huh? the title of oh. that clip. <laughs> Oh my god. <gasps> but yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, because, like, it's also, it's, like, a, the question on, like, particularly, like, the rarity of, like, it was, like, you know, especially if you're going to go for, like, a balanced kind of uh, system, I guess it's also kind of, like, important to kind of consider, like, what's the rarity of said moves, or, like, what's the rarity of said types. So, since, you know, if, like, something is, like, really... You know, like really, like I would say, like something that's like really rare, right? And have it like kind of like balance. It kind of like also, I don't know if it, I don't know, and that's something that like we'll have to play test. Um, but it's more or less the question of like, you know, like is it worth going for said, you know, rare type if. It, you know, like, you know, like, it's like kind of that reward, I guess, because it's like, you know, it's a rare type, you have to kind of work hard on, or probably have to work hard to get it, but it's also, you know, like, 
you know, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, obviously like, you don't want to make it like too broken or anything like that. So it's like, it's like a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of dials to kind of consider. Like the rare types work for video games, but when it comes to a tabletop game, you don't have to work towards it. Yeah, that you is just, true. It's true. You, I mean, just look at the uh, freaking starlight. We've got two dragon types and a fairy, which are supposed to both be re relatively rare. Star Wolf Skin says, a little <laughs> bit of bad news. I think this is all I can do tonight. My dog oh. is begging for some attention and I'm getting a bit tired. So the final layout for this will be done tomorrow, but the art is done. Let me bring it up. Oh, I'm loving it. He looks so good. Thank you, Mirai. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I want to say it looks fucking awesome. <laughs> I seen that color is great. Also, I snuck in here. I mean, Star Wolf Skin says, "I'll send the full version, and if any final adjustments are needed, let me know." For now, it's a good night to all y'all. Good night, Mirai. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, <laughs> this is awesome. Sleep well, and give your puppo lots of extra hugs and pets. That looks good. <laughs> and the bottom one always reminds me of like a Kingdom Hearts kind of design, at least in color style. So cool. I think I may do it. Star Wolf Skin says he'll get the best of hugs. Bye bye, buddies. See y'all next time. <laughs> See ya. Rex is a very good boy. <laughs> Gosh, a good boy. There we go. <laughs> I am not dead. <gasps> Sita! Sweetheart! They live. I live, I die, I live again. Hmm? Well, welcome back. I hope you're feeling better. I am not feeling great. <laughs> oh. I am very, very, like... I'm very head empty. Like, I am here, but checked out. <laughs> you need hugs. I look, 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 dear. I've never denied hugs, but at the same time, I'm like, I, I, I know how much hugs we do outside of just um, reaffirming how much I love you. <laughs> uh, can't understand that. Mm -hmm. But to huh. watch Jujutsu Kaisen, I just got done doing a bunch of voice acting lines for a psychotic clown character, so that's that was straining. <laughs> that was fun. Did I miss all the uh, the scar updates? The towel? I, I must have missed towel. Caldarius never showed up. No. Yeah, whatever. Just kind of chatting about it right actually i mean, I mean te technically I, I was kind of kind of doing a little bit right now no talking over the types yeah, yeah. yeah it's a shadow you know what i never learned the types for digimon is this what the digimon types are uh these are our own types oh interesting Oh, 
interesting type. Sonic? I don't even know what that is. Is that like a, a wind type? Huh. Actually, yeah, what is the difference between wind and Sonic, if you it don't mind? audio? Well, Sonic That's is audio. audio. Oh, wind is right. like flying, you know, the wind itself going around. Uh, mm, gotcha. That makes sense. That makes it. What's Astral, then? Astral is more uh, alien, uh, space, things like Cosmic. that. Yeah, kind of like a cosmic type. Yeah. Summoning gravity, like, well, black holes or something. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yes, Edamon would definitely be Sonic type. I guess I would zoom at. Well, the moves, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, uh, bringing you both up to speed since you just got back. At least I think you're still here, Seda. I'm. I am present. <laughs> I know you're not actually here, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll also uh, here, here. Have art. Since I think you just missed me, Rai. Uh, no, I just saw it, but it's heckin' oh. adorable. Yeah. Um, anyways. Um. So, we're working on type matchups. We've got our list of, uh, types here. And... Uh, yeah, we're figuring out how they match up with each other. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I am holding firm to types being resistant to each other. Um, otherwise, I'm focused on balance. Uh, every type has four types that it is uh, super effective against. And every... Uh, and as far as that goes, I plan for... Uh, basically... If, however many uh, weaknesses the type has... It will have the same number of resistances. This one makes my head spin a little bit. But I, yeah, I get what's going on here. Well, Nano, I mean, I would agree, but where are we going to move? Like, what are we going to drop? I mean, I could go for Necrotic not being super effective against uh, Psionic. But what would we instead, what would we make uh, for Necrotic's fourth uh, super effective type? I also see Wind and Electricity are strong against each other, both offensively here. So there are a lot of uh, opposing types instead mm -hmm. of triangles and such. Right. Um, like Necrotic, Light, and Shadow all mutually hate each other. <laughs> hmm. 
Right. No, that makes yeah, that makes sense. Like, um, I can see that. But yeah, uh, electric and wind. So wind is more than just flying type in our system. Uh, electric is definitely very effective against a bird. However, mm. electricity also does not travel through the air very well at all. Like, yeah, you get lightning strikes and such sometimes, but in general, it's a terrible conductor. <laughs> yeah. it, it takes a lot of energy to make it uh, actually transfer through the air. So that's why we went with electric and wind uh, opposing each other. I see. Now, I would have to ask the question, like, because if I heard this correctly, you kind of want to give each type, like you said, four things it's super effective against and. Yes. Um, and an equal number of resistances. Um, so for resistances, I'm planning that. Because, like, Psionic currently has six uh, things that it's weak against. Um, and on the flip side, to balance out Psionic, having so many weaknesses, I'm planning to give it an equal number of resistances. Um, so, could we potentially kind of... Um... Hello, Balasar. Could we, could we potentially kind of like give this like almost like a matrix score where we just say like, you know, hey, every super effective move it's against is plus one. Every resistance is a minus one and every immunity is like a minus two or a minus three. We that way we can kind of toss math. That. We can kind of toss math of the problem because I would definitely be... In the in the interest of like opening up, like um, I guess like type characteristics, characteristics and type diversity, I'd be I'd be more on board with the idea of it not necessarily being hard against. Like okay, you must be um, I, I I am not firing on all cylinders this evening, but like kind of like thinking back to like the understanding of like Pokemon typings, you have like on one side Steel is an excellent defensive typing. Its strength's not so much in the fact of like what it can do super effective against things, but just the fact that it resists a lot of stuff. Um, okay. And then you have like the op oh, go on, sorry? No, I was about to say like essentially you're trying to point out like like some typings like I guess they have like the typings properties itself is something to consider because you have like you have like your kind of system where you have like the basic triangle right like your triangle system and then you also have i guess like their niche systems where it properties of like certain types like you you were kind of mentioning that like how, how metal is like they're more resistance than like you know more defensive right so i'm kind of seeing that like i guess it's more or less is, is i feel like it's definitely that kind of mix and matching and it's like kind of figuring out like it's it's weirdly the um I don't know, it's like i guess it's also like the question is also and probably this is i'll have to ask later is the properties of particular types as well if you know if it said type does like better defense or better offense so like better offensive properties or so that might be something um so kind of consider but we do not have anything in particular on that front right now. My plan was just to make them as as even as possible. That was my no. only plan on that. Right. No, I'm just again, just it's just something to kind of consider and just kind of tossing it up. Um. 
That said, I am all for throwing math at this problem. I'm just not sure how to go about this math. Yeah. And make or it equal. It, it, yeah, I mean, the way that I see it, a typing being super effective against something is absolutely worth a point. Like, how, how we want to kind of grade this. But, like, you uh, being super effective against something is a positive for that typing. Being, um, actually, because it's, it's, it's difficult because there's the, it's, it's two sides of the coin. Um, but, um, but, um, at least like the way they see it, a typing being super effective against something, you know, adds your strength. It having weaknesses you know, takes away from that typing strength, and then ab ab having immunities adds to the strength of that typing. You know, like, as you kind of have pointed out here, like, electric, you know, does nothing to Earth. That makes Earth, that, that adds to Earth's strength as a typing. Um, so right now, like, you know, Earth has four things it's super effective against, four things that are super effective against it, and one immunity. And one resistance, which is itself. Um, I guess just the question to kind of frame it just comes down to how much do you value something being super effective against something? How much do you value a type being immune to something else? How much do you um, take away that value from having a, a weakness? You know, like, you know you know, water to fire. Uh, I definitely... I, I definitely feel that... Uh, I, I like the... I, I definitely feel that immunity is really powerful. Good night, Dunbrine. Uh, beyond that, I kind of feel that super effective and resistance is equal. So, as like a super rough idea for metrics, would like, let's just say, super effective, plus one, resisted, minus one, Immune, I guess, plus two. So are we only going to be looking at the uh, offensive side of things then? As I said, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to approach. Yeah. I think you probably see the problem as well, dear. Yeah, no, and like I said, and I, 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 like I said, it's a lot of dials. There's a, it's a, it's a lot of dials to balance it. Because like, I, I feel like actually the way you kind of approach it is that the the uh, the resistances and the super effectives, like mathematically, they work themselves out regardless of whatever side you look it on. You know, if you're looking at a type. Actually, almost if you look at the if the type column, you kind of actually have to look at it at both axes. You have to look at how our type is offensively and how our type is defensively, because, um, in theory, having a bunch of you know super effective attack or like being super effective against a lot of types would have to be balanced out by, you know, either a lot of types resisting it or some types just straight up being immune to it. Um, and my brain is not shot enough to re recognize the idea of how that should work, but also at the same time, my brain is definitely shot enough to figure out the math of that. Um, 
I know, I'm confusing people with sleepy brain <laughs> logic. Yeah, but it, it, it's... Oh, yeah. Resistance strength points we booked. <laughs> oh my god, Kieran. <laughs> it's just the strength of my sleeper. <laughs> I can't even see it now. <laughs> and it is very much a push and pull because let's just say you want to balance out I don't know, like I guess like, you know, you want to balance out nature by um, giving it a resistance to earth attacks. Um, then, you know, now you're also affecting earth as a typing because now there's one less thing they can be effectively typed against. Trying to do everything I can to help, but all I'm thinking about is uh, Pokemon stuff and trying to make it relevant. The, the, the things I went through playing Pokemon, how Psychic type was busted, how they introduced Dark types, and just wondering and I'm trying to remember what pitfalls they had to go through until they were more balanced. Helping See you us. later, Likos. And even th but even then, a lot of their ba types are not balanced. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to balance with that with a lot of typings mm -hmm. like that. It, it's really hard to balance, and sometimes, you know, you have to. Sometimes you have to. Like, sometimes, like you know, you like I think like Pokemon, like how they balanced out Dragon is like again, it, not only they made it weak against themselves, but they made generally Dragon types to be strong, like you know, particularly strong moves. Yeah. But I th and then they added like more, but they, I think they added like more weaknesses to it, I believe. And sometimes, like, and it, like, think like, when they, with secondary typing as well, like, there's just some Pokemon that are just like, yeah, four time weakness, insta, insta kill <laughs> with ice. It's like, or and it also with fairy, uh, getting added as well. So they had to like introduce another typing to counter that. But now you have to now you have to like hope you have to do that whole dynamic of like, how do you figure out this new typing, and and it, and it repeats. Yeah, like, before, like, fairy types were introduced, like, dragons were an overall really damn solid typing. Because they were basically super effective against themselves and only resisted by steel. Um, and then only ice, which is generally regarded as one of the weakest types in the game. Um, and other dragons could attack it. And then it resisted fire, water, grass, and electric. Water being one of the strongest types in the game. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, dragons were kind of just a bulky powerhouse. Um, you couldn't... You didn't really have many avenues to hit them. Um, and then fairy type came along, kind of balanced it out a little bit. Um, but fairies um, in turn became a very strong typing because they were super effective against fighting dragon and dark um so you know they kind of aren't became also, the dragon killers aren't they also super effective against uh ghost and psychic no normal oh. normal typing um they are only resisted by fire poison and steel um and steel steel rock and um ice or sorry no sorry um i sorry i'm missing anything Poison and Steel being the only types that's effective against. Um, but it's actually very interesting, just looking at the type chart now. Um, out of the... I 
I mean, honestly, I think like by the you know, either either way, math math is going to be involved. You know, out of the eighteen typings, um, and I'm just actually gonna look at this eighteen times eighteen. You know, out of the just the core three hundred and twenty four type combinations or type matchup combinations. Um, there are only eight immunities on that table. Basically, to just under two two point four percent of the type matchups involve immunities. It's a rarity. Yeah, but this is kind of why I'm leaning towards the idea of, one, just not having immunities, period. Like, I understand their place, but I feel like they are too much of an imbalance to keep. Right. I kind um, of I can see that, because, like... Like, who, you know, what is immune to what, and if essentially, if everyone, like, it's also kind of like the fact that, like, you can't, I don't feel like you can give, you know, give immunity to every single type. It would be kind of hard to do that. And I feel like that would end up might even, like, limit uh, possibilities um, with immunities as well. It, so it, so it's like it's pretty much another layer of like complications i feel like yeah i mean i'm almost kind of tempted into my metrics to kind of like a type having an immunity adds like essentially plus you know plus three to its strength score you know if the idea that you know ha being super effective against something and having immunity adds to that type strengthening and being weak against something adds or takes away from the strength kind the goal should be kind of to have a zero or at the very worst a minus one a minus or plus or minus one um being as close to zero as possible um just because you know with the fragmentations if you're applying math to it trying to get how many typings is this again Oh, for the for the current chart. So sixteen typings. Sixteen. So, yeah. with this one, it is six. It is technically sixteen typings. However, I intend for basic to have no strengths and no weaknesses. It is baseline. It is just no influence either direction. Though I'm I'm very amused by the idea of basic also being resisted by basic, just so you can have that one scene from the first Pokemon movie. <laughs> no, just slaps. <laughs> oh no. I mean, I I'm debating that. <laughs> um It's not very effective. It's not very effective. <laughs> it's not very effective. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! It's, 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 heck. I am sorry for no. the late night emotional damage. <laughs> no, I was to say, I'm getting critical hit by emotional damage here. Emotional there. damage. There, it has been done. Yay! <laughs> Zim, I am sleep deprived and it's 120 in the morning. Please do not be taking my advice on this. Ow, my head. I'm kind of i kind of I'm kind of for keeping basic kind of just open for everything. Um I don't know about the idea of basic being resistant to basic personally. Um, and the reason why I'm kind of keeping that is because 
I, I because I would just say this as well because there's always going to be like that like you know again like I, I feel like it's just kind of like a basic like you know non typed attack and I feel like it's just I think it would just be good just to have that as like a baseline this you know this move or you know is not going to affect you know everything you know, it's not yeah. going to like have any yeah you know what I mean it's like it's a nice base to start with with and and, all, and, and and again it's just yeah but at the same time as a counter argument I agree with you though but as a counter argument um typing wise damage memes um <laughs> Well, my idea oh, was okay, basic. Oh, okay, okay, look, if I if I wanted to go for emotional damage, I'd do the ending scene of Pokemon Heroes. <laughs> or the the climax scene of oh. Pokemon Heroes. That is that is maximum emotional damage. Like So So much tear so much tears will make a soul do. Um uh, uh, but my uh, plan in regards to basic is that it will be comprised of bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Uh, Tau I wanted to come up with, for each type, some kind of uh, matchup on that front. Like... So you, ba you basically have type matchup within type matchup? Kinda, yeah. But only for basic. Um, where the type, the damage type of basic is split between bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And then we might have, say, Earth is resistant to bludgeoning, uh, resistant to... Uh, or resistant to bludgeoning, uh, weak to slashing or piercing, you know. And then no effect with the third. Or not no effect, but no impact either way on the third. Hmm... But oh. Taldarius suggested doing it where each player comes up with their own, based on their character, uh, how they want that interaction. You know, mm -hmm. like a player deciding to play a Geodude might have uh, weakness to piercing, uh resistance to slashing and no effect either way from bludgeoning whereas I don't know I uh, my brain can't think of a, another example yeah I basically rock, basic gets rock paper scissors on each character is is uh Taldarius's suggestion. I wanted to go with rock, paper, scissors with by type, but I do kind of like the suggestion of it being by character, or we just keep it as it is with no interaction or no strengths or weaknesses. Yeah, I the the thought that I had is <gasps> frag on. <laughs> yeah, the, th the thought that I had. Is that Avi's cute? Okay. Um, <laughs> but the thought that I definitely had is that at the moment, I like the idea of basic, but I feel like, for lack of better words, it may be too basic. Um, cool. Because from my viewpoint, there is isn't much benefit for a player character per se to or to be enticed by the basic type unless they just want to be basic which you know all all power to them but making basic resistant to itself following the trend of everything else which i would assume would also mean that a basic strike maneuver they would also be resistant by does turn basic into a you know a little bit of compelling option. Even though I'm saying this fully agreeing with what Abby said in terms of, yeah, it probably should just follow the tr basics trend of not resisting or being resisted by anything. But 
it's the compelling thought that I had for that. I guess for that, I guess on top of that argument, and this is kind of also ties in maybe storytelling wise, I feel like basic should be kind of, it's like, you know, like how like, like, for example, like, if you're using a fire move, right, like you like flamethrower, right, it obviously contributes to that element. But if you kind of add basic, like but how I imagine basic, right, is supposed to be like the actual physical interaction of the world. Like, for example, like, you know, poking people, like poking with a stick is going to cause a lot of force. That is, you know, but it's not a type or, or essentially it's not like, you know, it's kind of like a base, you know, on in its base element rather than like, I mean, if you had like fire, like a, if the stick was on fire, I think that would be like, oh, it, it capitulates. It's okay. It's utilizing, you know, the fire element. So just kind of organizing it and just kind of like tying into something from, you know, something that's easily translatable is going to, you know, just to kind of, to kind of keep it simple and also, you know, and make the, I guess, try to also make the appeal that like basic is also really good just for the, just like, yes, it doesn't have, it, you know, it's, you know, the, it's it's essentially the jack of all trades yes it's not effective and like you're not going to be able to do any bonus damages to any of the other type things but at least you have you know that's also kind of viable of like hey if i want to have a move that is you know i you know that is kind of good for everything but not like super effective you know the basic kind of move set kind of you know is there as you know to you know essentially that's kind of the appeal for it that, that's how i see it um and also again like to, it, it's just for like translating from like story to mechanics you know if we have basic being resistant to itself you know it i, I it's kind of hard to see i mean unless like you're wearing armor but it's like okay but i'm wearing so let's just say like you're adding armor into this into the, into the mechanic right okay so i have armor but that person who doesn't wear armor who's a basic type is resistant than someone who's like me who's wearing armor is you know what i mean so translating wise like story from you know it's a story to mechanics and mechanics a story just to kind of keep it consistent and you know you know, at least some consistency to it. You know, bringing up armor, that gives me a great idea for, uh, with the three damage types that go under basic, you know, the bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, instead of it being based on the character, it could be based on their, uh... Based on the equipment. Yeah. Which... Their which armor. Makes, would make so much more, which actually would make sense. And again, like I said, it's kind of also like a little bit of that familiarity as well, because yeah, yeah it. I think that's also really important and makes it easier for uh, for players to kind of you know to kind of get used to this used to the system. Yes. I like that idea, but let's move back to I. I I right, think right, we're right, going right. to stick to basic being exactly as it is. No strengths, no weaknesses. It is the baseline. Um, but for the types and how they're going to match up. First off, do we want to just ignore the existence of immunities? Do we want to have it be... Because I am 100% on board with just not having immunities, period. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing just from a tabletop standpoint. I don't see that working out. Yeah, I, I would say yes to kind of, you know, not do immunities. It makes it exceedingly hard to balance for, and I I, I don't... Yeah. And I guess also, and also just kind of story-wise as well, like you're still kind of in, you're still kind of like being influenced by said move as well like especially like for example like even if you're a fire or i was just say like let's just say like your i, I would say like the electric type going to like attack you know uh, electric type 
uh, you say earth type being immune to electric type. If you put enough electricity to the ground, it's still going to do, you know, the force itself, right? Not just not just the electri the electricity of the element itself, but like also the, you know, the force of it and everything and all of its other attributes is still kind of hurt. So, I kind of want to say like, yeah, I definitely want to say it's. I would say it's res it could be resistant to it, but I yeah, it being immune to. I mean like. Yeah, so... Different words. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, I, I hope, like, you know what I'm, like, trying to go with this. Yeah, I understand. Um, it, it doesn't matter how strong... Like, like yeah. Er, er, ground type is resistant, but it's not actually immune. You pump in enough, it's going to do damage. No. Bye, everybody. I gotta go. Uh, I care. What? See Why ya. do you gotta go? I posted in the chat. I was trying to... I didn't want to interrupt. Alright, yeah. see ya. Oh, don't be like that. <laughs> you know what the day is. Gotta give me an extra time. Once when I'm done, I'll be back though. See you when you get back. Alright, I'll try to get back as soon as I can. If not, I'll see you tomorrow. Right, bye bye. Take care. I, like. From a, like, uh. I guess, like. The Pokemon traditional standpoint. It's like, I do like the idea of immunities, but at the same point, I agree from like a tabletop balancing perspective. It's not a lot of fun, hypothetically, if um, I were to shoot, you know, I know in this case, like, you know, actually, let me find let me find a good example. Um, I guess while you're doing that, um, I'm also kind of like thinking about like player interaction, like, and I'm just thinking about like an interaction where like it would kind of suck if like you had one player who couldn't do anything because in a particular situation, their attacks wouldn't do anything, wouldn't do any damage, or it would be like really like it wouldn't do much impact due to the fact that like this one situation where where you you know they wanted to use this let's just say said move or they you know they kind of built around it and kind of have you know have a problem you know essentially just kind of like unable to do anything because the you know a particular situation a lot you know is you know they're kind of stuck of like i can't do anything because they're all of you do this you know this you know this element that i do you yeah, know, like, like that. Pr pretty much like, you know, could you imagine like, you know, hey, I have this pretty badass um, poison character. Um, um, but all the that, but, yeah. you know, oh, but metals immune and the boss is made out of metal. Oh, <laughs> you read my mind. I was about to say that. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I was about to say, like, imagine, like, you were just, you're just fighting metal, like, Pokemon or, like, or metal types, right? And they, you can't do anything about it. It's just, like, yeah. Why are there so many loot bugs? Plus, I think the potential combination of, let's just say, for example, a psionic character going against a mythic metal type um, creature is already going to have a hard enough time with a quarter, you know, a quarter resistance to that um to that creature assuming they're monotype psionic um that i think immunities probably feel like overkill immunities as far as i know are good for like video games they're not necessarily good for role-playing games all right so we're doing away with the immunities works for me yeah i, th I think mm -hmm. as like just the other counterpoint example if you're playing like a Pokemon game and you come across a Pokemon that is immune to your ace Pokemon, 
you're just going to switch out to another Pokemon on your team. That's probably going to be super effective. <laughs> but, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to walk into a fight and just be like, hmm, Dart's not going to be effective here. Okay, let me, um, let me just go through my catalog here. Okay, I'm going to bring in my other character. Like, I, it doesn't work. Mm hmm uh, so, yeah, I think that's probably a good argument. Uh, Perloined, I will say that uh, Onyx is a rock type. Uh, Onyx is not actually immune to electric. He's just resistant. Um, but yeah, I, I get your point. I just, you, you know, had to pull the uh, nerdy, um, actually, thing. I, it, it's very interesting you have a rock type that evolves into a ground steel type. Mm -hmm. Wait, Steelix is ground steel? Yeah. Huh. What, what, which Pokemon do you think I refer to whenever I, like, I need to remember my resistances? <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. There's just there's there's a lot of weird typings, and there's just typings where you just don't remember because it's like. Wait, Onyx is rock ground. I thought it was only. Yeah. Onyx no, it's ground. yeah, it's rock ground. Oh. First it's so it was weird. Only rock. <laughs> it, it that's like the point, like with like rock and crowd they're like they're too similar. <laughs> I I was saying here like, for some you're, reason you're saying, I thought yeah. it was. <laughs> I thought it was, like, one small example where they actually kept the rock by itself. But no, apparently not even that, is, not even Onyx is... Oh. Everything is rock ground. There is no pure ground. There's no pure rock. Actually, there is pure rock. I mean, like, rock's pure rock. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. And we also have Sudabudu, Nosepass, Regirock, uh, Cranios, Rampardos, Bonsly, Rug and Roller, Baldor, Gigalith, the Rock Ruff Line, Ro Roly Coley, Stone Journer, Nasil, Nessestack. On voice. I mean, I Please save really us. In the conversation. I was just telling you you were wrong. In cloth. Also, Rock Ruff is your rock. Unless he's dead. Rock Ruff or is floating. dead. Or floating. Or... Or floating yes, through the air. Type, or floating through the air, yes. Or, or buried deep underground. Or sinking into the water. Help. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> or falling out of the sky. Oh, Dark and Vector are there. I... <laughs> okay, I, I don't know why... My brain's just like, you know, the dumb test to test what kind of rock rope you have. Toss it into a lake. <laughs> it's like regular rock rope. It's going to pat paddock it, paddockly swim to shore. The ghost electric rock rope. It's already dead. The water wow. flying rock rope. It flies through the air and doesn't land in the lake. The steel ground. It sinks. You must hurry and go rescue it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad Taldarius didn't hear that because that would probably end up being a plot point. Probably. It probably already <laughs> is, let's be fair. Oh. Mm. There, there. But. Either way, back to our type matchups. So, I'm still leaning towards simply keeping it simple. We have four types that each type is super effective against. And then we go through the columns and, like, Astral has four weaknesses, so it gets four resistances. I would... I, I think that's probably a pretty easy way to balance out a type, because... If you just look at it, super effective plus one, resistance is a minus one. As long as the type equals zero, then 
were good. I would probably say mathematically we might end up with something being a plus one or a minus one in the end, but I think that is pretty as close to balance you can get. Hello, last... Yep, lots of people here. Yeah, because the last thing that I want to do is, you know, just look to be like, okay, guys, like electric, like needs to have like one more thing resisting it, but like. I, I guess we gotta have like, light. Actually, then again, light probably would resist um electric. But like, you know, it's kind of a. Okay, I guess we gotta make you know, f fire resistant to water for balance sake. Like I, I extreme I example that is the opposite, obviously. But like, you know, you get the gist of like, you know, hey, we, we not we might not be able to find a suitable type matchup down when we get down to the bottom like you know we'll probably be very easy for the first 10 and then we'll start having some questions for like the last six yeah um, all right well let's just start here with astral um we already have one resistance of uh psionic is or er, astral is resistant to psionic um reason behind that being alien brains you know they, they, they're not going to understand. Uh, if you're living here on Earth and you're a psionic, you're not really going to understand how to manipulate this alien creature that you've never encountered before's brain. At least that's my logic. Yep. Also, Rygon cute. Oh, you're, you're all cute. Oh, heckin' cute. Especially, especially Vector. Wait, wait, that ah. Dart, 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 Dart says with a rose in his mouth and bedroom eyes. Ah. Apologies for the distraction. Let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the uh, Prime sub, Neo. Much appreciated. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Sorry I'm not talking too much. I'm just letting these guys do their thing for a little bit. Well, you could help us, Rygon. I don't even know where you guys are at with the whole thing. Well, I, I can bring you up to speed pretty quick. Uh, if you want to. I don't know how much help I'll be, though. Well, you'll I don't definitely know the very well. You'll need to have the document up for sure. Oh, I'm playing. Okay. But yeah, at this point we're going by columns. We started off with rows, you know, make sure each row's got four check marks. And now we'll go by columns and it'll be uh however many check marks there are, there's going to be an equal number of X's plus one because, you know, it's resistant to itself. I, I kind of feel like... <sighs> yes. Okay, so, like, I'm seeing the logic. Okay, so if we're thinking astral for aliens... Um, Alien, space, uh, extraterrestrial, things like that, yeah. Hmm. That weird uncle that you swear can turn his head and blink his eyes sideways. I feel like metal against aliens might not be effective. Like, part, like part of me is, like, wondering, okay, like, is... Basically... I feel like fire or metal, you can make a very good argument for either being super effective or resisted by astral. Well, this is types against the other. So fire is weak against astral. Metal is weak against uh, astral. That would be how this would work. I know, I know but um, it's like when I think of like when you're using the aliens description, I just think Zerg and just like nothing but like a good fire bat against a Zergling. <laughs> That's very true. 
That is very true. I like that logic. Well, we'll put an X there for now. Not the full one because I, I'm using the these for, you know, I mean, potential. Again, for, I mean, for metal, though. I mean, I mean, so I, bullets. I like <laughs> fire being effective against it, but I think metal will keep it no effect either. You know, no special thing. Hmm. Then I feel like at that point, um, a good um, argument could be made for. Um... I don't want to. Oh, okay. You first. I was about to say maybe electric should be uh, electric against astral should be resisted. Yeah, and I was thinking the same thing for poison. Um, sorry, what? Huh? I, I think you guys lost me there a bit. Oh, I was about to say, um, essentially electric should be resist. Uh, so essentially electric should be resisted against astral. I could see that. We'll put an X in there for now. Until we're certain. Uh... Just are you doing the X's just for the resistances, or are you doing, like, a basic check mark as well for the other side? Uh, so X's are for resistances, uh, check mark. Uh, until I'm certain, I use uh, Slash for uh, super effective. Uh, then should the fire against Ash will be a Slash? Oh, right. Um, so we are only doing resi uh, resistances right now. We've already got our super effectives done. Um, like, we could go through and adjust. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and go through and see what you guys think. Because, like, we've already made one pass on the super effectives, but you guys weren't here for that. So, um, for Astral, uh, we've got... Astral and Mythic mutually opposing each other. Like, they're both super effective against each other. Um, I'm kind of thinking... Kind of like Rayquaza versus uh, Di Deoxys. Or Dioxys, however it's pronounced. You know which one I'm talking about. Um, I'm kind of thinking along those lines for that one. But also, mm. you know, just general... Things that are super, especially supernatural in the worlds versus things that are extraterrestrial. Um, Astral is super effective against psionic. Uh, alien minds kind of thing. Though I am not beholden to it being super effective against psionic. I'm just... Uh, I know I want astral uh, astral to resist psionic but i'm not sure about it being super effective there um astral is super effective against sonic because you know the void of space kind of thing and, and then I, 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 wind same reason i kind of want to say for other than wind I, again i might say it might be effective on electric because i'm seeing i'm thinking about energy right like Space can hold a lot of energy. I feel like that's how I, that's how I'm kind of seeing it as. So you're saying instead of wind, astral would be super effective against electric. Which, yeah, and then I could see that. What do you think, Seda? So astral super effective against electric. Um, Hold on. What, Orem? You doing an easy thing for Astral to be good against? Orem, please. please join voice if you want to be involved. Just join just us! Simple. Join us! They're saying join us. Oh, I was just getting snacks and then heading to bed because I work tomorrow. Join us. But I work. Join us. But one of work. us. One of us. One of us. But I'm not a puppy. I'm not a puppy type. Not yet. 
Yeah, not yet. yet. Yet, that is the key we can word. Fix that. <laughs> Dinosaur puppy. There I am go. an artist, and I'm not afraid to use them. <sighs> Anyways, back on track here. What do you... So, uh... Moving wind to electric. Uh, the super effective for astral. Uh, yay, nay... No. Seda. Hmm. Good night, Kenku. Alternatively, we can move Cy the super effective against psionic over to electric. Because I'm not, uh, like, I like it being effective against Wind and against Sonic. I'm not so beholden about it being super effective against Psionic. And Psionic has quite a few weaknesses as is. I feel like for me, I kind of want to take this as homework. Okay, so we can move to something else. Yeah, because I, I, because I definitely kind of want to just like take it and like mess around with it in my head and just kind of like go with my first impre gut impression for a lot of things. Um, okay. But do that when I've actually had some rest. Well, I already know your opinion on the craft and perform stuff, Seda. Um, I could poke you, Avi, on what you think on it. I really wanted to hear what say or er, uh, Taldarius and her in particular. Uh, Enja, you're, are you still here? I am present. Hello. Cool. So for you and Avi, um, so right now we have a bunch of skills, as you both know. Um, craft and perform are two among those where it doesn't sit right with me for them to have their like, overlap. It, it's not a, like crafting is, you know, making something and performing is like singing or dancing or playing an instrument along those lines. Mm -hmm. But like, we'll, we'll just narrow it to crafting. Um, Cooking a meal and forging armor are two vastly different things. About the only thing that they might share is the fact that fire is involved, or at least heat, and even then, barely. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, cooking and like and like crafting it like metal like doing metal crafting or like armor crafting i mean they don't they both take a lot of like they do have a, it is a lot of um even though they basically don't share a lot but the preparation i mean like, crafting is more than just oh you whatever you make it's also how you prepare things like preparing like even preparing food like right you also have to make sure like the food is good right you have to make sure the quality is also good and also you cook it you don't make people sick right so well, yes it's more common with that but 
I also think like. Well, you know, like, yeah, 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 go ahead. Let, let me go ahead and finish what I. I yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. I'm not beholden to people being able to put dots into craft and have it apply equally to all varieties of crafting. Because there's so many different things out there that you can craft that would fall under their own specialties. So my proposition is that craft and perform, if you do not have the specialty for whatever you're trying to do, like with crafting, if you don't have a specialty for cooking and you're trying to cook something, you have a minus one on the roll. It's not that drastic of a penalty, but it is still something to represent that, yeah, you have these dots in craft, but you don't know how to really apply them to, say, cooking or metalwork or basket weaving or book binding, etc., etc. Like, I can see the argument for all of them, you know, you gotta prepare, you gotta get the materials together, you gotta get your tools. Like, that stuff I can see uh, so carrying over between the two different ones, but... Right, so this is kind of like, essentially, so it kind of like boils down to like profession for craft. Basically. Yeah. Like, I know for D&D &D and Pathfinder, well, older D&D, because new D&D &D got rid of craft, but... Uh, when you put ranks into those, you're not getting a... You're, you're not putting it into a generalized craft skill. You're putting it into craft book binding. You're putting it into craft leather working, craft uh, metal working, etc., etc. There is no generalized craft skill. I'm okay right, they... with keeping a craft skill a generalized one but i'm saying it should have a penalty to it unless you have a pr have a specialty for whatever you're trying to craft i kind of want i will agree having a profession will not only i think that also implies better with story as well storytelling so i kind of want to say that yes i think but probably for crafts i feel like there should be a profession or, even, or if you don't have a profession, you can kind of have it lead at base. But I guess as soon as you get a profession, you could you can do like you get like plus plus one to you know whatever profession that you're that you you know that you selected or you're going for, and then you can do like a minus uh, a minus one to any prof you know outside of your profession, because again like as stated like you know like you know well like kind of like yes most crafting has like very base like you know base like processing of like you know prepping doing you know like planning and then and the final product yeah again cooking and you know cooking and like you know metal working or weaving or uh leather binding is all going to be different so I can definitely think. I can definitely agree. Like I, I feel like, for that, having, I would say maybe if you have a particular profession, that will give you the bonus. Yeah. Well, uh, the specialty will give you a plus one. What I'm seeing is with, uh, like, if you're trying to craft something that you do not have a specialty for, you have a minus full one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Then, if you do have the proficient, the uh, specialty, then you remove that minus one pr penalty. In addition, you get a an extra plus one. Yeah, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm hey, agreeing. No. And what are your thoughts on that, uh, Enja? I mean, I am for it because. Certainly, just doing something 
with with without training it is you can do it well but it can't be at an expert level mm -hmm. like no you can't just pick up a flute and be a genius at it speak for yourselves but um i'm gonna actually head off for the night okay oh. all right sleep well you know, I, I i i am i'm not i am not entirely here so i hope you rest uh, well yeah, thank you thank you beans have a good one bye -bye. so many cuties how am i i am doing well actually how are you doing eternal I, i'm doing okay today today i'm feeling a little bit more chill i slept like 15 hours though Pet, pet, pet the Rygon. No, no, no. You just yeah. chilling too? Aw. Seda's suggestion on that was keep it simpler and not have a penalty for those two skills, but... It, it feels just... like something should be done. <clears throat> it it feels, yeah. Because it, otherwise, it... then then skill becomes less important. Yeah. Having this specialty for those particular skills doesn't really matter. Um, and there's very few things that are shared between them. Like playing a flute is vastly different from playing a violin. <laughs> um, I don't know. You say it, you say it like that, but every time I try to blow on my violin, people say stop. <sighs> this is the best you're going to get. Anyways, <laughs> um yeah, those are the only two that I am thinking of having a penalty for if you don't have a specialty. But there are also skills that, frankly, are mostly just roleplay anyways. Like, craft and perform. Like, yeah, craft you can make weapons and armor with, but otherwise it's mostly just a roleplay skill. Mm -hmm. Um... So at least they're not going to have a penalty for anything that, you know, the main story typically. I mean, obviously you could have a campaign where everybody is just crafters or so and trying to fill orders or something. But, you know, in general, your typical story is your combat isn't going to be affected by you not having... Uh, by you having a penalty in craft and perform. Um, on that front, I do w want to go over some of the other skills where I had similar ideas for them. Um, as far as them also requiring uh, specialties. Um... Academics was one, though I'm very much leaning towards just not bothering with that. Uh, appraisal was another. No, we'll we'll pass on that as well. Etiquette, mm, plenty of general knowledge there, Lord man. Okay, I guess actually looking at this list, it's really just those two, except for subterfuge. Um, but subterfuge would be a special one where subterfuge is also what you roll for stealth and you can be stealthy without having a specialty, but I think that there will be some special, some particular skills, uh, specialties under subterfuge where you will need to have the specialty, or you suffer a minus one. Um, in particular, lockpicking. 
you're going to need to have some actual training to be good at lockpicking. Yeah. It is a very delicate thing. Um, another example would probably be pickpocketing. Um, disabling traps. Things like those. You're going to need to have something more than just the baseline skill for those kinds of uh, things under subterfuge. Um, what do you think on that, Abby? Hmm. I guess it's more or less of like, I just want to make sure I I understand it, right? So like essentially stealth and subterfuge are two separate two separate things, right? No. Stealth is part of subterfuge. But there will be parts of subterfuge, such as lockpicking, where you get a minus one unless you have a specialty for lockpicking. Is that the only one that's special? Like, that has, like, that kind of exception to it? Cause... That would be the only one that has that uh, exception to it, yes. Mm. Though, I could yeah. see arguments for survival having a few parts under it like that. Um, I, Yeah, I would say for skills, something like that, I kind of want to say, like, keep it to kind of keep that simple um especially like that especially that with the the um with the ruling with like the minus one i and it's just it's just kind of like i i guess it's more or less in the player sense of keeping track kind of like every like i guess it's also again like kind of trying to follow the consistency of other, all of the other skills uh since you're kind of tracking with all of these like i'm seeing like uh, let's see, six. Well, what we could do is utilize the feat system instead of the specialties and include some feats that are, you know, you've got a lock picking feat, and that will allow you to use subterfuge for picking locks. I'm like, kind of like extending it. I can yeah. actually, I can sleep. extending yeah, I the skill that... as opposed to limiting it, kind of thing. Yeah, I would say that might be a lot better, um, because that way you could use the search views can be kind of base for everyone, but also making it, it useful for getting like getting that feat is a benefit. So it makes it it also makes it more, you know, it makes it enticing instead of like negating it. It allows you, essentially, that feat allows you to kind of give you that ability to, like, oh, with this, because you have this feat now, you also get an addition. It, it kind of widens your skill, which is, which I think would be really, really, really good and more appealing than the kind of the, oh, you don't have, lock, you know, essentially, if you don't have lock picking skills, minus one. But if you do, it just negates it. You, know, you can just do the base roll. Um, yeah, I, I'm so, liking the idea of, wording it in a way where it's more you're expanding the skill rather than oh you don't have this you've got a penalty yeah it yeah yeah i like that idea well uh i i will definitely set that up um i will say specialties for perform and craft are probably going to be cheaper than standard specialties just because you have to have them um just to make up for the fact that you are required to have them versus the other skills mm -hmm. well, I did it. Um, so yeah, that is good to know. I will go ahead and implement that, or make notes to implement it.
Um, Alright, so another thing I wanted to go over. Multi-attacks. Yes. Um, what Chomper has demonstrated. Yeah. So right now, the multi-attack system is... You... Uh, it, it's a building minus four dice for attacking more than once in a turn. Mm hmm I'm thinking that may be a little too much. I'm thinking of changing it to minus five. Um... So, like, your first attack, you make it full power. Then the second one is a minus five dice. And then third is minus ten. And fourth, if you've got enough dice to begin with, minus fifteen. As opposed to minus four, minus eight, and minus twelve. Uh, thoughts on that? That seems fine. However... It, it, it does also bring up the point that there is no point to not trying a multi-attack. Yeah, I just don't want it to be too much. Yeah, I understand. It's just that that there's no incentive to not, so everyone should, should otherwise start trying to do these multi-attacks once they start getting enough accuracy. Because after all, no matter the number of dice, never say never. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Abby? Hmm. I feel like that's something I kind of want to play test. Um, I can definitely see that you know, like adding another dice to that you know, minus five to kind of prevent the over usage of multi attacks. But, hmm. Well, the... I, I don't I know about, about um, other dot-based systems. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen uh, multi-attacks in any of them except for Pokeroll. And, well... <laughs> Pokeroll is uh, very odd with how they do it. Uh I'm wrong. Whereas uh, Pathfinder, I know that extra attacks are made at a minus at a building minus five. I believe somebody said that I think it was Shadowrun that does the minus four. I believe so. Yeah, I think it was Shadowrun. Um, Actually, I had a thought. What if it has to be a different move? What if you can't use the same move twice in a, twice in a turn? That was another thing I was kind of tossing around in my head. I kind of like it. Encourages more creativity. Gives and... other moves a point instead of just spamming your strongest one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then uh, yeah, I do. I do want to say as well. I, I guess it's also like the. I, I guess the question is, do we? I, I guess for multi attacks, right? Would it the accuracy? Hmm. I'm actually trying to, I'm trying to see here. Uh, that, yeah, no. I was essentially I was kind of thinking like maybe like if we use a different like it, it's because it's like while I do like the idea of using different moves as well to kind of you know keep the creativity, which is really, I think is a really good idea. But I'm also kind of worried the fact that, like, how many times that you can attack as well. So, and so I'm just trying to, like, now try to think, like, is a big mushroom. what would, like, 
I guess it's no. more or less like whether should be if whether or not if there should be a separate another dice to do that. But I don't like that because that's it's our yeah. I don't want to make it more complicated than it should be. I guess. That might be something that might be homework for me to kind of look into, but I would say for now, since I also kind of want to try to, if, if it could be play tested, to keep it as, to keep it as negative, um, to be negative four, but I do like the idea of using separate, using a different attack, um, to kind of, to follow up, but I would say there's should be a limit to that but not like i don't know if it's like like i would say like you do like one attack and then another attack before you start getting the penalties after i'm also considering uh potentially administering cooldowns to strong moves i definitely don't want to do that um yeah no it's just that like once you've got body slam with the point of tackle but that's uh. just pokemon yeah, that's just Pokemon in general. Mm. Um, like, this particular system, we've got it set up where you can... Uh, you can upgrade Tackle to be just as good as uh, Body Slam. True. Um, but in normal Pokemon, it's like, okay, I can only know four moves, so... Uh, I'm gonna pick the best ones. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Body Slam is meant to be a direct upgrade to Tackle. Um, but also, it would encourage people to get more moves than just one. And to make them, to level up some of their other moves. Because as is, you're going to use, yeah, as it stands right now, they're just going to spam their strongest move over and over. Right. And it's also a way to kind of encourage that balance where they've got to invest in more moves rather than just focus on the one. Because, you know, you, uh, you, you go get yourself a... Uh, you get yourself Flamethrower and you could spam that every single turn five times, but... Meanwhile, you have literally no other moves. <laughs> or just a basic tackle otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, I, I do like the idea of they have to do other moves. I think that would be a very good way to balance it, without, uh, to make it feel less broken. Uh, also, we're going to go ahead and be done with uh, Stream Raiders for tonight, everybody. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be going for, but yeah, we'll be done with uh, Stream Raiders for now. So, yeah, I, I like the idea that we'll, we'll go ahead and implement it and that we can play test. We'll keep it at the minus four for now. Pet the Abbey. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna pet pet the Zim and then pet pet the right butt. What about the Enja? I was just I was just about to say pet pet the Enja. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Give all the pet pets. I am part. <laughs> Hey, Chris Ovos. Alright, so we're good on the multi-attack stuff. Um, AoE cost, that's something I need to go over with Taldarius. Um, bosses get two turns per round. I still very much like that. 
Uh, action economy is the biggest killer of bosses. Is just simply the players being able to absolutely destroy them by simply well, that's having why, more turns. Well, that's why, um, like, say, in D&D or something, they have those uh, bosses that have, like, uh, legendary actions. Yeah. Right, where they're kind of able to play them, like, every after every player's turn. Yeah, that's kind of... might not be a bad idea to consider. That's what I'm thinking is the bosses get two turns per round. Will that be enough, though? That's the question. Uh... Considering versus D&D, where uh, they get their legendary actions, but those legendary actions usually aren't as uh, powerful. So... Legendary actions aren't as powerful as what the boss can normally do, but they're more plentiful. Whereas with this, they get a little bit less, but those are more powerful. I do want to say, with that in mind, if they are, if bosses are going to have two turns, I kind of, I want to say, let's apply the same rule that they cannot use the same attack. This, I feel like it would be a good way to prevent bosses, and this is just for for, uh, for storytellers, to kind of just not spam attacks um, as well. Because I think what would be interesting as well is not just the players being creative, but also the, also the bosses to be creative as well. Well, as far as that goes, um, it'll still be the can't repeat her turn. So the bosses, they get two individual turns. Uh, so they could use, you know, it would be the same round, but not the same turn. Uh, so they would be able to oh, use gotcha. Flamethrower twice in a round, oh, gotcha, gotcha, but only gotcha. once per each of their turns. Um, I already went over some of the ideas for advancement that I had. Uh, general consensus was just keep it as it is. Uh, just give more guidelines to storytellers on how often to hand out things. I do want to also say, and I guess, it, I don't know if it's already added for the bosses. Um, I don't know if it was already stated, but I feel like, again... The discretion to the, the uh, to the discretion to the storytellers for the the two the two turns uh, per round. Um, I mean, yeah, the storyteller can always change that. That's just right. the fact of any tabletop system. The storyteller gets to decide. Right. Eh, I don't like this rule. I'm gonna just change it. Um, but that said, uh. I don't think we're going to specify the st for the storyteller to choose whether to give them two turns or not. I think it's just mm -hmm. going to be part of the rules. But it's going to be in the storyteller section, so the storyteller can be like, eh, I don't want to use that right now. Um, Fair enough. And I think that's the main stuff that I wanted to go over. Uh, beyond this, it's just writing it all up. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think we're good on the, this little session of working on the, uh, system. 
I think Huzzah. I've gone over some good stuff today. Got things straightened out. Uh, now it's just a matter of actually writing it all up. And that's just going to take time and focus. Ugh. <sighs> Well, as long as you had fun. Oh, yeah. Definitely had fun today. And I thank you all so much for coming by and helping out with all this. You guys are awesome. Getting everybody's input really, really helps. Because uh, I'm just one person. I may decide, hey, this sounds cool. And in reality, it is probably the worst thing I could have decided to try and put in. I don't know. That's why I need all of you to help out. <sighs> well, we will be able to test it out fairly soon next session because we're going right back into the dungeon. Yes, exactly. Hmm. We've definitely already made a few hot fixes to the system. Uh, as we were playing. And I realize, oh, this is broken as hell. Just gonna fix that. But anyways, thank you everybody so very much for joining me today for this DevTail stream, working on our SCAR system, as well as an Art Martin's Creative Tales stream. With Mirai having joined us. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Patreon, and more. They are on the website as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is your support that allows us to continue to do these streams and continue developing this system and getting things going. I can't do this without you guys, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by sharing the stream around, as well as coming by, hanging out, subscribing to our YouTube, grabbing some packs of cards through YouTube, uh, through stream loots, and you can also support the channel by simply uh, using our Humble Bundle Partner link. But for now, thank you so much for joining, and I bid you all the most fondest, a duke. Bye. Bye-bye.